holy crap. People persist in doubting the evidence. Don't run and hide. Don't be afraid. Don't turn away any longer. The truth will set you free. You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. And now, your host, the captain of conspiracy, the prince of paranormal. This ain't your daddy's radio network show. This is Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. That's right. Fader Knights, Fader Knots. This is Fade to Black. This spoke radio for the masses. Today's Thursday, November 20th. 321 days into the new year. We are live from the JP Motorsports Studios right here, downtown Burbank, California. We're in a bunker, by the way. A bunker. <laughs> a bunker. <laughs> For KJCR on the Dark Matter Radio Network, I am your oh so humble host, Jimmy Church. It is Fader Nights. All you Fader Knots. Fader night, Thursday night, best night of the week. Best night, and I feel guilty to all of the guests that we had on the show this week. I do, but the, you know, it's Fader night. Open lines. We're going to open up the lines tonight at 745, 45 minutes from now. So be patient. I just tweeted, you will understand. I promise. Big salute to the proud men and women in uniform all around the world fighting the good fight for us. Without them, there is no me. There is no you. There is no us. And you couldn't hear me right now. I'd like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, east, west, north, south, up and down, far and near, hither and thither. Our great friends to the Great White North. Everybody's the Great White North this week. Buffalo. You think they're doing like five foot deep snow angels? <laughs> that would be cool. Podcast is updated. Let's just get all the stuff out of the way. We got a lot to do tonight. Podcast. Just go over to chimichurchradio.com. The podcast is right there. Look at Donna. Lovely Donna, what's up? Follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio. We use TweetDeck here in the studio. So when you follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio, then you're going to hashtag DM Radio Net. You create your own. Let's do a little uh, high-tech tutorial right now. You create your own column. at hashtag DM Radio Net. So you have your normal column first. Next is the DM Radio Net Sandbox. Create a third column over there and get that going for whatever you want to follow. For me, it's hashtag F2BQ. Those are the questions that come in here to the studio for guests. For myself, tonight it's for me. And that stays pretty clean. Clean not in language. Clean as in uncluttered. You know, if somebody deliberately gets into there, I'll see it and I know that it's intentional. All right, so TweetDeck. TweetDeck is amazing. TweetDeck is a Twitter product. It's not one of those third-party things. It it works seamlessly. So cool. I actually run Twitter at the same time, so I have Twitter on another tab. I do, because then at the end of the at the end of the night, I can click on Twitter, and I can see how many tweets came in at the end of the night. When you hear me say, "Oh, you know, fifteen hundred tweets, two thousand tweets, a thousand tweets." 
That's how I know. I just leave Twitter alone and then notifications tabulate. But I stay in TweetDeck. Make sense? That's what I do. And that's what you should do. TweetDeck, free download, easy to run, so cool. And it, and it's, it's really when you look at what Twitter actually is, when you, when you think about what Twitter is, it's really TweetDeck. TweetDeck is what Twitter wants to be in the normal Twitter page. Am I making sense? Yeah, Jonas just retweeted here. Yeah, I'll get your tweet deck going. There you go, Jonas. Right on. Thank you so much. So, I, Jonas, are you back? You were down in, like, Puerto Rico or something, Bahamas. You're back? Are you back in the snow? All right. Let's get this going. Faders.org. Oh, we are going to be launching, by the way, uh, a new website here very soon. Looked at it again today. Oh, man. <laughs> Still not as cool as faders.org, but uh, it's it's running a close second. It's very, very, very cool. And I'll explain more as we get closer. All right. You guys ready to get this cracking? Love the bacon picks. You know, for, for all of the new listeners that come in, uh, everybody here, you know, it's great. But they go over there and they see all this reference to bacon. They don't. He don't know what it means. And all it was was, I don't know, maybe three, four months ago, we were hanging out one night. And uh, what were we doing? Oh, we were starting the podcast. We were doing all those downloads uh, here in the studio. And I just jump into Twitter, and it was like a Saturday night. It was late. I think we were all drinking. And somehow... Bacon was mentioned, and I just typed in bacon. It popped in my head, and we've never let it go. It's one of the coolest things ever. And so for everybody new coming in and seeing the bacon references, and Carol Peralt sent sent us a, uh, an E.T. with a plate full of bacon painting. It's hanging here in the studio. i got to take a picture of that and uh, get it out there. But, um, yeah, bacon, bacon. Uh, I love my bacon. I like maple flavored bacon. Today, guitar god Joe Walsh is 67 years old. Larry Warren, oh, a couple of months ago, Larry Warren uh, shot me an email and he's like, hey, dude, uh, Joe Walsh is a friend of mine and he just let me know he listens to your show. You got to get him on. You want him on the show? So I. Uh, yeah, because he's an alien. That's why Joe Walsh. Fantastic. His, uh, his album, the live album, you can't argue with the sick mind changed my life. It changed my life probably more than black Sabbath, paranoid Led Zeppelin two. It did. I'm thinking deep purple burn. You know, changed my life. There are calls coming in. Listen, I'm not going to open up the phone lines uh, for 45 minutes. So hang tight. Hang tight. 745. There will be no phone calls. we got too much stuff to do before then. Where was I? Joe Walsh. You can't argue with the sick mind. I found out that you don't have to be a heavy metal guitar player to have taste. Joe Walsh freaked me out. And uh, I've been a big fan ever since. Cool dude. Also, today. And that's how you make the list. That's how you make the list. You change somebody's life. And that's what Joe did. All right. Mike D. Mike Diamond of the Beastie Boys. 49 years old. You would think with Beastie Boys money, do you think he's bought a couple of islands right now? Do you think he has like his own country somewhere? Beastie Boy Island somewhere? (laughs) I would think so. There's another one that changed changed the world right there. Oh, man. Mike Diamond. Mike D., 49 years old. Our dead guy's birthday today, and we all need a moment of silence, is another game changer. Guitarist Dwayne Allman. That's right. Born in 1946. Died in 1971. At the age of 24, 
died from a motorcycle accident riding his Harley around Macon, Georgia, came in contact with a lumber truck. Sad day, 24 years old. You know, the good news is uh, Live at the Fillmore got recorded right before that, so we have that. And, of course, Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton and Layla, all got done before that tragic day in 1971. Dwayne Allman, man, he was a player. And so, you know, and with that, talking about Joe Walsh, uh, one of my heroes, Dwayne Allman, one of our heroes for everybody. We, we know that. But I just thought on Twitter, because we have, you know, such a musical... Uh, my DB 49 is like Jimmy church being, uh, never mind. I thought about that too, but you know, I guess it all, it all happened about the same time. I, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think Mike D and I are about the same age. Uh, don't say that about Joe Walsh because then we got issues. But uh, so anyway, since we led Zep two cannot be topped, I realize that I'm just saying when I drop the needle on, you can't argue with the sick mind. I just. Oh, man, what a band uh, that was, too, as well. So anyway, uh, I, I thought, you know what? With our music musical family that we have here, us Fader Knots, and it is fa- Fader Night. Yeah, Warren Haynes, he's right there. And look what everybody's tweeting. So this is my Twitter question to kick things off. Who is your guitar hero? Who is your guitar hero? Who's the guy that moves you? Doesn't have to be the king of shred. Doesn't have to be that. You don't have to say uh, Steve Vai, although he might be. But who is your guitar hero? Who is your guy? Who is it? I I, I really want to know. I want to see this light up tonight because uh, do you do I like Tommy Bolin? Everybody likes Tommy Bolin. How could you not like Tommy Bolin? Uh, yeah, who is your guitar hero? Let's light this up. And where are you tweeting from? So, Michael Schenker, that's a good one. I'll tell a Michael Schenker story one day. I've got a few of them. That's a good one, George. I respect that. Jason Becker from J Star Gilbert? Really? Al Mule and Frank Zappa, Spiritual Warrior, you've uh, scored so many points right now. You have no idea. Joe's Garage, and I'll just throw that out there. Nuno, Betancourt, wow, from Method. David Gilmore, Jimmy Page, yes, and that's from Jason Romero. Jason, I already knew that about you, brother. Uh, Let's see. Trey, really? Buckethead, yeah, I'm with you on the Buckethead. Tracy G, David Gilmore, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, just keep it up. Slash from Big Ben comes in strong. Pat Matheny. Pat Matheny. Leo Kotke from Lou. Wow. Leo Kotke. Yeah, good. two good ones. Yeah, I used to dig Pat Matheny too. Tasty. George Benson, Eric Clapton. This is great. K.K. Downing from Michael Anderson. K.K. Downing, really? Wow, that's... <laughs> I can respect it, though. John Lee Hooker, Jimi Hendrix. That, that's why you want to participate. Dime bag. Unbelievable. Ingve Malmstein from Les. Dime bag. There was another game changer. So was Ingve. That's why you want to come here and hang out and Twitter right now. At J Church Radio. Get Tweet Deck lined up. It's what you want to do. Hashtag DM Radio Net. Allison Bell finally comes in with Stevie Ray. It's about time. <laughs> Somebody had to. Trey, a second tray from Fish. Wow. Susie Cream Cheese. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was a good album, actually. That was a double album. Okay. All right. Where were we? Keep it going because I'm going to read these all night. I want to know. And and, and and where are you tweeting from? So if you're going to give me a guitar hero and, and, and you're in the Netherlands or you're in Macon, Georgia, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know who, when, what, and where. Cliffs of Dover guy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ah, I got that out of the way. Twitter is at J Church Radio. You can email me throughout the show, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. You can also go over to the website where we use non-NSA specially encrypted servers. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Click on the contact page. That's what you do. Buck Owens from Brad Kelly. 
red, white, and blue guitar. Dave Mustaine, wow. Okay, Eddie Van Halen, it's about time. And leave it up. John 5 from Status Unknown. Wow. Yeah, yeah, John 5 is amazing. Um, <laughs> one day. I, I can get him in here. I've, I've got to get him in here. He's a really cool kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. All right, where are we at? You know what? Before we get to uh, email and news, let's just get the paid stuff out of the way. That's right, so we can keep the lights on. Let's do that really quick. This is Fade to Black. It is Fader Night, folks. We're going to open up the lines in 30 minutes. John Teeter will be the subject, I promise you, this evening. This is Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. Follow us on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Shoot me an email to Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. It is Fader Night. Taking your calls, 323-825-5045. Write that down. Don't touch that mouse. I will be right back. Stay with us, everybody. You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, you have tuned into the latest phenomenon in late night talk radio, Fade to Black, starring the inimitable Jimmy Church, showcasing his continuing quest in pursuit of knowledge of the strange paranormal. Sit back, open your mind, and let's get cracking. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three-letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444 one 909 5444 or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S.com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. On the Dark Matter Radio Network. <laughs> Yeah, Fader Night. Wow, we got a lot to get through. I'm watching these tweets fly by. Unbelievable. You guys have taste. You guys have taste. Not a slouch in a post. And I mean that. Not in one tweet. All real players. Tonight's Fader Night. We're going to open up the lines here in about a half hour. 323-825-5045. Shoot me an email to jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. That's what you do. Jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Make it good, and it will get in here to me. One just popped in from uh, the producers here. Let's see. Uh, It says bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Weaves of bacon. Maple bacon. Canadian bacon. And, of course, the bacon, bacon truck. Bacon, bacon, and more bacon. Wash down with Jack Daniels. That is from Fang. There you go. <laughs> See, you got to make it good. Make it good, and it will get in here. Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Follow us on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Hashtag DM Radio Net. Download TweetDeck. That's what you got to do. It makes it life so easy. 
And then you can watch this thing bing by like a slot machine in Vegas. Email from Ed Millar. He says, good evening, brother. After watching the video today, that mass behind Saturn reminded me of an electromagnetic shield possibly protecting a fleet of mining ships pulling resources from non-populated planets. Wild as it may sound, everything is on the table. Everything is on the table on this show. Couldn't take What a great email. From Jeff Natsky, he says, The method of growing crystals in this way is named after the Polish scientist Jan, I can't say his last name, who invented the method in 1916. Chakralski? Chakralski? I think that's it. These are used in modern times to make silicon wafers for IC chip industry. I highly doubt the mystery object is from an alien spaceship. Single crystals of this type have been known about since before the 1900s. Silicon, germanium, and gallium arsenide are all grown using the above method to supply wafers for IC chips. If you do a Google search, you will find and read all about it. Such crystals could very well predate the Roswell, New Mexico crash by many years as the process was invented in 1916. Thank you for that, Jeff. Everybody will not let this go. This is from BM Hickman. He says, check this out. Silica is silicon dioxide, the major constituent of sand and quartz. Silicon is, silicon is one of the 92 naturally occurring elements on the periodic table. It is classified as a metalloid. Silicone is a polymer also containing silicon and oxygen as well as organic molecular units. Organic molecules and molecular, molecular, molecular units. My favorite word used to be demolecularize. Molecular, molecular units contain carbon and other atoms such as hydrogen, nitrogen, and or others. So, to summarize, silicon is an element. Silica and silicone are molecules containing silicon and other elements. Forgive me. But I used to teach chemistry. I couldn't help myself. My brain hurts. But, BM, thank you for that. All right. Let's get going. Keep the guest requests coming. Uh, next week, we have got a stellar lined up coming your way. Uh, almost had a huge... Uh, I can't even say. We were so close. And then it just turned out that... He was appearing on another show, and I we I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Maybe we'll do it in the future. Um, and, oh, I wanted to say tonight I'm drinking uh, out of my Walter Lewis uh, question, everything mug. Wanted to get that out of the way because it's right here in front of me, and I just thought about that. Let's get to the news. You ready? Chemistry rocks. What happened to Ebola? Well, the headlines today on CNN, Immigration. The Florida State shooting, winter weather, Ferguson, the power grid, you know, with China, Bono's injuries, and flip phones. Oh, and Ty Herndon. There you go. Threw that in there. No more Ebola. Is the scare over? Is it done? Somebody uh, sent me some email the other day that it was malaria in disguise. I thought that was interesting. Mike Nichols. The award-winning director and pioneering comedian who was one of the few people to win an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony died tonight. That's right, Nichols. He was 83. Uh, big name here in Hollywood. Meant a lot to all of us. Uh, he directed, of course, Who's Afraid of Virginia, Virginia Woolf, a movie that disturbed me when I was a kid. Silkwood. He also directed The Birdcage. Robin Williams. And The Graduate, he was the husband of former ABC World News Tonight anchor Diane Sawyer. Mike Nichols passed away this evening. French authorities backed off a claim that a 22-year-old man was connected to the beheadings in a recent ISIS video a day after publicly identifying him. Hmm. Do you think he showed up? at somebody's office and knocked on the door and said, dudes, wrong guy. 
I wonder if they sue in France like they do here. You ever wonder about that? Are they sue happy? Because I, I smell a rich man, a spokesman for the Paris prosecutor's office today, distanced the agency from a news release put forth by her own office that identified Mikhail Dos Santos as the second French national believed to be an ISIS terrorist. Can you say, oops, Bex just said they do. <laughs> They're so happy over there. Are they really? Once anonymous with Cape Cod, humpback whales are on a free feeding frenzy. They can now be observed just a stone's throw away from the Statue of Liberty with the added bonus of the New York City skyline in the background. Ecologists believe the increase in whale sightings is tied in part to water quality improvements in the Hudson River. Who'd have thunk? Which flows directly into New York Harbor. Cleaner waters have led to an increase in populations of food, oily fish in the herring family. This abundant food supply means that some whales are now concentrating their North Atlantic feeding in New York and New Jersey waters rather than continuing north to Massachusetts and Maine. No, I think they're smarter than that. I think they're just running from the Japanese, if you think about it. Very smart. Check this out. A Utah State Legislative Committee will consider a bill that could continually cut off the millions of gallons of water for the National Security Agency facility south of Salt Lake City as a protest against the mass collection of America's data. That's right. The bill, sponsored by Republican uh, Representative Mark Roberts, a Republican, would prohibit any municipality from providing material support or assistance in any form to any federal data collection and surveillance agency. Wow. That's barely, barely a veiled reference to the NSA data center. The facility completed last year at a cost of about $1.7 billion of your dollars houses supercomputers that require 65 megawatts of power Enough to power 33,000 homes, according to the Associated Press. All of those computers require a lot of water, which keeps them cool. Think about this. It gets better. Bluffdale issued a $3.5 million uh, bond to pay for water lines that will eventually pump Millions of gallons of water a day into the facility. Bluffdale signed an agreement with the NSA that allows the agency to pay less for water than city ordinances would otherwise require. And that, my friends, ain't right. Utah. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Wow. <laughs> I mean, just like, Wow. Wow. Is that trippy? I tripped out on that. If you have a story you want me to cover, you want the world to know, email us right through the website, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. You can tweet links to as well, at jchurchradio. Find us on Facebook. That's a good collection data center for uh, breaking news. Uh, and the Facebook fan page is jimmychurchradio.com. Easy to find. Go and do it. Post. You'll see also on my my, uh, my normal, my personal page, my friend's page, people post news there all the time. It's one of the habits that you have on Facebook, and I really appreciate it. And I do check it out. I'm constantly, you know, whatever I'm doing throughout the day, I'm in my car, got the cell phone, shopping, I'm in a meeting, I'm always on Facebook looking at breaking news and, and on Twitter. So if there's anything there, send it to me. All right. If it's, if it's good, you know, I, I can't, we can't know everything all the time. That's right. Are you guys ready? You guys ready for fade or night? I am. This is fade to black bespoke radio for the masses only on the dark matter radio network. 
Shoot me an email to jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Charles just did. King B just did. Mark just did. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Are you afraid of the dark? Don't move. Don't touch that mouse. You are listening to Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses, on jimmychurchradio.com. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark matter. You're listening to Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio ¡Claro que sí! Hoy, hoy, I'm Reese Evans You're listening to Jimmy Church This is a revolution The revolution will not be televised The revolution is on radio Chao Yeah, tonight's Fader Night, Fader Knots. This is Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. We are only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Shoot me an email to jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. I'll get to your emails in just a second. Follow us on Twitter at jchurchradio. Very simple. Go and do it. Hashtag dmradionet. Get your tweet deck on and come and hang out in the sandbox. Thursday night is a great night around here. Open lines all night. We will open up the lines here in a few minutes. But first, I would like to welcome to the program our good friend, attorney for the John Teeter family, Larry Haber. How are you tonight, Constable? (laughs) Doing very constable. Very good. Thank you. What do they call tonight? Thanks. What do they call a counselor? Yeah, counselor, counselor. Counselor. That's it. Yeah. See, count, constable means I'm a police officer, so I think you've just elevated me once more, but thank you. <laughs> well, you probably, you know, I, police officers get paid once in a while, too, so always look That's at it that true. way. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go with that. How are you tonight, Larry? I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Welcome back to the program. Uh, as you know, and, and let's just uh, have a conversation here, but as you know, uh, the last couple of times that we talked, and we were talking earlier today, and it's been almost a year since the first time you were on the show. And I don't know where this last year has gone. And you didn't believe me. <laughs> what? No, it's, it's time. It's time travel. I know I talked to you two months ago. It can't be that long. Yeah, right, right, right. And then, yeah. and then you were on with us again uh, a few months later. And, and, and that, that in itself was probably five months ago, six months ago, five months ago. It, it, yeah, at least. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't. Right. I, I, I don't know where the time has gone, my friend. But uh, the last time you were on with us, you had said that uh, November possibly was the month that uh, John Teeter would be back with us. And if and when that, that happened, uh, we would do it on this show. And here we are. We're on November 20th. Uh, we have uh, what? Well, you know what? This is Thanksgiving. How many days are in November? I don't even know. Um, I've, I've been 30. Is I'm it, looking is it? at my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. It's the only reason I know. I never remember that little rhyme that says how many days. Of. I didn't know it when I was younger. I still don't know it now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have to look it up every time. Uh, so here we are. It's November 20th. Uh, what's going on with John and... Uh, uh, have you t- have you spoken to the family and where are things? And and by the way, I'm um, gonna I'm yeah. gonna, let, 
I'm going to let the aud- audience know right now that when I spoke with uh, Larry earlier today, I said, Larry, don't answer any questions that I'm going to ask you right now on the phone. I want everything fresh tonight. So, and as you know, we have, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So uh, what's going on? Well, the only thing I'm able to tell you, and it is some news, um, I was able to get a hold of Kay and she had said to me that she would like to explain what's been going on the last few months and that uh, she would allow me to do an interview uh, for, with her within the next couple of months. And that's all I got. But that is significant because last time I had had any contact and it had been months ago, I was told that they were looking at doing a movie, although I wasn't involved with any of it. And and I would have expected to from the lawyer standpoint, at least, but at least now I know there, whatever's going on, she is planning on doing an interview. So that is news for me too. So that's fair to share with you. That's fantastic. Now, since you're announcing that on this show, then mm-hmm. Kay will be doing the interview uh, with you and I on Fade to Black. That is my understanding. She didn't commit to where. I'd be happy to, to make you know to mention it to her. She just basically um, it was uh, just quick a quick text. Can you give me anything going to be on the show? She said, Yeah, we need to do an interview in the next couple of months. So I I know she is aware that I'm on the show tonight, mm-hmm. and I also know that she wants to do an interview, but I didn't get to the last step. So I'll work for it. I'd love, love being on your show, so mm-hmm. let's, she, hope, she, let's hope that's what she wants to do. She's probably listening right now. So, Kay, uh, first off, I don't – Go right uh, ahead. Yeah, I yep. don't, I don't <laughs> bite, Kay. I don't bite. It will be a great show. <laughs> and the last time that you did uh, an interview with Kay, you had her – um, off of the microphone, and you were speaking for her, right? Correct. Was uh, uh, she willing to actually step on, uh, uh, you know, step on the mic uh, when she comes? I on? have. That is one thing I would I would tend to doubt. Um, I think that there are so many people that are out there interested, or would try to figure out who it is by voice, or or something that um, the family and she in particular being so careful to never even be on or to be on the net or to be traceable, so to speak. Right. The only way I, yeah, the only way I ever have any contact, it isn't even by email. It's a, it's a phone number that, um, I don't know where it goes. And, uh, it's usually just a quick text once in a while. And then I get told what they want me to do or how they want me to do it. So they're careful so that it doesn't even get traced through me, quite frankly. And I understand their hesitance. Right, right, right. Yeah, because if I get that phone number, you know, that it's all over. I'll call her every it's, day. It's, every it's day. all over. Hi, how you doing, yep, Kay? Wait, Jimmy, stop <laughs> calling me. What are you doing, Kay? Jimmy, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> so um, now we had, uh, I think, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, we had someone call into the show that said he was John Teeter 2. Not number two, John Teeter two, not T O O. You know the number two. Okay, so uh, and he came on and 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 we talked, but he wanted to emphasize that he wasn't John Teeter one. He was calling from Japan, and he said a couple of things, and it was interesting to me. I will say this: this is my question to you: How many? people have contacted you claiming to be either John Teeter or another John Teeter? Oh, boy, that's a good question. We didn't talk about this before, but um, I would say at least that I find even somewhat credible that, you know, to me would be somebody that's really out there trying to do it as opposed to just a, you know, a one-off, at least a dozen in the, in the last year alone. Sure. I've been on, uh, yeah, I've been on Facebook with somebody that is John Teeter um, that posts all the time. And I get emails and questions from people and uh, asking that if I could be, they could be put in contact because they miss their mom and, and they're from another timeline. I get those things all the time. So, yes, a lot. Yeah, I, I get it a lot, too. I've got to weed stuff out. You know, I know things. You know that I know things. And, and so when I when I read stuff, it's easy for me to just, you know, peel through stuff. Um, but I get it all the time. But uh, we're, we're anxious. Now, one of the things that he did say, um, and I'm going to throw this back to you because I, I have sure. been waiting for this. He said that the, the John Teeter movie that is currently in production is not going to get made. 
can you shed some light on that? And you kind of touched upon it earlier. When we talked, yeah. Uh, I, as far as I know, there isn't a John Keir movie even being made at this point. I know that uh, there's a couple of people that have contacted me about doing video style uh, interviews um, like I did with uh, Jay Cheel, um, but nothing that is a movie per se. So if there's something going on in Hollywood in particular, I'm not involved with it at all. And I would presume that the family isn't either or, or else I probably would have been contacted. I can't say for sure they could be working with other people, but I, I would tend to doubt it. I probably would know about it if it was happening. Yeah, I would think so. I, th- I, w- I would think that, uh, well, there's no question. I mean, you represent the family and that would be it. You yeah, would- but, but like clients everywhere, you know, if people are, are get, um, uh, they want to talk to other people, they want to make sure that they don't have all their eggs in one basket, uh, Kate could be working with somebody else right now, and, and it wouldn't bother me. That's just that's anybody's right when they use an attorney. Right. And, you know, every time I'm on the show, I have to emphasize I'm not involved with this at all. I just get contacted to do legal work on an occasional basis for things that need legal work, and that's all I've ever been involved with. So I'm happy to be on the show. I love to talk, as you know, because we talk a lot. But yes, yes, yes. I don't, you know, I can only offer the little bits I offer because I really have not been involved in any other way with any of any of what's taken place over the last 15, 20 years. You're such an, years? Yeah. you're such a, yeah. you're such an attorney. You've got to do the I know, disclaimer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got a I'm disclaimer, sorry. a conversation. No, it's, you know what? For people that are listening, at least I don't mind talking to people. I answer the phone. If people call me, I answer emails. I don't like to not respond to people, but I get asked so many different questions and, and I just, I just write back all the time. I don't know. I'm not involved. Somebody sends me a release to look over, you know, or somebody asks for a contract, I can do that. But that's all I've ever been involved with, really. It's why, why won't, uh, why won't John Teeter go away? It has been now, this is 2014, 1999. So, you know, we're 15 years yeah, into I know. this. 15 years. It, it, I think it's getting more and more so now. Uh, my, my experience in terms of people contacting me and, you know, going back to some of the theories that it's my brothers or it was my son for a while or, you know, any number of my family members in particular, I, it's actually heated up. I get more more emails now and more questions. I know social media has something to do with it since 99, but I get more and more all the time. And I'm just amazed because to me, it would have just stopped already if there's not a whole lot coming from the family and there's no real credible, you know, evidence from anybody that John's here right now, and I have no idea, then you would think somebody would be onto something else by now, but they don't ever seem to be. No, no. So it, it's the gift. They don't. It's the gift yep. that keeps on giving. That keeps on giving. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I had no idea when I did started some of this work that I would be involved like this. Absolutely none. Um, this would have been, you know, like clients I help with, with film projects and things and the other stuff that I do. It's, you know, a few months project and then, you know, that's it. You're done. But this has been going on for quite a while. I, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on with this and, and have another chat. And I know that we'll be talking over the next week. Tell Kay, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so is I the will ask. The world. And I will call you, Jimmy, if, if I get any word at all or, you know, when it is or if she wants to do it on the show, I will absolutely let you know. I don't know when I'll hear from her, but next, but uh, I'll certainly let you know. All the best. Larry Haber, everybody. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. You're welcome to me. Have a good night. You too. Larry Haber, everybody. Attorney for the Teeter family. So there you have it. With that, this is Fade to Black only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. This is Bespoke Radio for the Masses. It is Fader Night, folks. 323-825-5045. You can Skype in Fade to Black 14. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's Thursday. I will be back taking your phone calls right after this. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. It's Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? My name's Brian Taylor, ninja badass extraordinaire, and this is JimmyChurchRadio.com. J J C R in your face. JimmyChurchRadio.com on the Dark Matter Radio Network.
Network. All right, everybody, welcome back. Fade to black. Only on the Dark Matter Radio Network, the spoke radio for the masses. Tonight is Fader Night. That's right. That was Larry Haber, attorney for the John Teeter family. And we wanted to, you know, I wanted to put a couple of things to rest. Okay. I do know things. I do. You need to be careful about what's going on out there. And I'm looking at micro singularity. She was expecting, uh, I, I never said John Teeter was coming on the show tonight. I said, I have John Teeter news. Okay. So, K. Uh, let, let me see. Asking why Teeter won't go away is funny. Gee, I don't know. Someone keeps bringing him up. <laughs> yeah. John Teeter is one of the best things that you can ever uh, research on the web. One of the best things out there. There's no doubt about it. All right, phone lines are now open, 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. You can also Skype in, which is fade to black 14 That's the number 14. All right. Now, what, getting back to John Teeter, the, the month, it, we are now sitting at November 20th. Okay. Oh, uh, 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 uh. we are now sitting on November 20th. We've got a little bit of time left in the month. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. There's uh, things are going to shorten down really quick. There's only a few days left on the show. If you think about it, how many shows are we going to have before the, uh, the end of the month? See, 10 days. So eight, eight, including today. Is that right? Am I doing my math correct? I think so. And the question is, is, is Teeter coming back in November? I can't, I can't say what I know. I can't, I don't want to make, make a statement that I can't back up, but I'm pretty confident that something is going down. Okay. All right. I want to talk Teeter tonight. That's what I want to do. We haven't done that in a long time. Hi, this is Fade to Black. It is Fader Night. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? You're live right now. You're live. You're live. Three, two, one. I'm good. Hey, Jimmy. Okay. You need... Sal. Oh, hey, Sal. You got to turn down when you. When you call sorry. into the show, always turn off yeah, the radio, I, man. I know. I meant to turn it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Turn it off. Turn it off. It, I'm trying to get out of the area of it, you know. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'll call you back. Uh, Sal. Sorry. Sal, yeah. st stay with us. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I Yeah, I just want to, uh, wanting to say hi. How you doing? You know, I wanted to say Roy Buchanan as far as the best guitar player. Oh, ever. man, Roy Roy was amazing. Oh, I'm trying to think of that one album that I used to have uh, so many years ago. Yeah, Roy Buchanan. I think he was from uh, Canada, wasn't he? Was he Canadian? No, I think it was. No, I'm thinking he's from North Carolina. I mean. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why. I, yeah, I don't know why Canada came in. Yeah, Roy was one. It, it might be. I saw him twice, and I'll tell you, he stood there, and he played that guitar, and he made it sing and cry, and he just never moved, winced, or anything. He just couldn't believe it. <laughs> he, yeah, he was pretty awesome. What do you think of uh, uh, John Teeter, Sal? What do you think of this whole thing? Well, <laughs> you know, that's pretty out there for me. I'm not as familiar with all this stuff as you guys. I'm just kind of getting into it, you know, in the last few years, and and uh, that's that kind of makes my mind hurt thinking about it. To be honest with you, yeah, you know, I'm not really sure. Well, you know, when he's when you go in, what you should do, Sal. Uh, I recommend this to anybody too because it's it's so much fun. Is just go go back to all of his original posts and all of the forums. 
go back and read, look at the photographs and look at the evidence. And, and when you come out of the end of that, it's going to take you a couple of weeks, but when you get through all of that, then you have an understanding why it's uh, being discussed today and you can draw your own conclusions, but the best thing to do, because pe- you know, people talk about teeter all the time and uh, people that have never, that know anything that don't know anything about John Teeter, you can bring it up and they'll go, yeah, that's right. That time traveler guy, you know, people have heard about him, but they don't know about, you know, the history and all the evidence that is out there, uh, that is still on the net today. So that's what you should do. And, and well, just that's where I am with that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I've been listening to you for quite a while. And like I said, I feel really ignorant. You act like sometimes you're misinformed or uninformed. I tell you, I feel ignorant, and, and I've been, you know, trying to follow for several years. But there's a lot out. There's a lot of this stuff out there. There is, there is, and I've, you know, and that's why I figure you're. I mean, you are a teacher for sure. I mean, you're you're you, you're getting us a, a lot of information out here that we really would love to know. Hey, Sal, thank you so much for the phone call, man. Is that you that sent me the uh, Roy Buchanan email? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at it right here. Thank you, Sal. You have a good night. Okay, thank you. Hey, Donna, turn down the stereo. I'm trying something wrong. (laughs) It just will not go. I'm going to close it. There. Hi. (laughs) How are you, Donna? I'm doing okay. A little bit under the weather. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for your concern. It's uh, going around, I hear. I, You know, I fear, you know, you have to remember, I have to get on this microphone for three hours every single night. And I have not had, I had a cold like a year ago. But other than that, I haven't had a cold in a year. And it messes with not so much... It's not the pain. It's not the sore throat. It's not the lungs or anything. You just can't concentrate. <laughs> you can't think. No, you just feel uncomfortable all the time. That's it. Now, I, what I want to say is I, ha- I am not, nor have I ever been, nor will I ever be John Titor. <laughs> Donna. <laughs> oh, so what... <laughs> Well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you know about John. Uh, what, what's your what's your conclusions now after all of these years? Well, I do know there are interdimensional beings. Excuse me for my congestion. Interdimensional beings, and to fold time and space is not that different. And I do believe there is someone out there, and they will provide proof when it's time, if that's the way it goes. I mean, I just believe that. So you think that Teeter may have been an interdimensional being as opposed to a time traveler? Or was his time machine, as we call it, just an interdimensional uh, uh, transport device? Yes, I believe it's an interdimensional transport device. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, so if you, do you think an interdimensional being can, uh, it's one thing to go into, a, you know, another part of our, you know, a parallel time right next to us, but you're saying that you think that they can actually uh, travel time? Yes, as they are, it, generally they're in a bubble, there are some that I believe are a little more advanced that can affect the world at large. And I think that's what John Titor has stumbled into. Interesting. And did you, uh, were you back in 1999 and 2000 when the flurry was happening on the forums? Uh, were you part of that? Did you go and read all of that? I did. I did. I was, I, you know, like I said, 30 years, I've been a, a fan of, Art Bell, and, and I've been watching and listening all these years. And I remember when it was happening that there were people then that didn't believe it. But he, because of my experiences with the shadow people and the shadow animals, I'm not convinced it isn't true. Right, 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 right. Do you remember uh, 
the first time that you saw the John Teeter pictures, not not of himself, but uh, of of uh, his, uh, you know, all the evidence that he was posting online in the forums. When you first looked at those, what did you think? Because that that to me is what moved me. The first shots of, you know, the time machine, the box, the military equipment, the labeling. What? How did that affect you? Well, I can't go into too much detail, but I actually have seen a time machine. What? Okay, Donna. No, you're going into detail. <laughs> okay, you just lit Twitter I up. I do that. I'm not actually supposed to talk about it. But um, I used to date a professor, and he worked at Lawrence Livermore Lab. Mm-hmm. And um, one of his things is he told me, and he showed me this contraption. That's what I'll call it. And he said, one of these days, you'll be able to go any time. And I said, what? He said, you will be able to go any time. Not anywhere, but any time. Okay. And uh, Letty just tweeted, do tell, Donna. (laughs) Took the words right out of my mouth. Do tell, Donna. And all I could tell you about the actual experience I had with it is I stood in it. Okay. This is getting good. Oh, Donna. But it wasn't functioning at the time. Did it look like Teeter's box or you said you stood in it? Yeah. Okay. Did it look? uh, Well, this is, this was a prototype. Okay. Uh, It, they hadn't, it may have even worked. I don't know. He was kind of out there, you know, anyway, I mean, it was a metallic box. It had a door. It had a small window. About, ooh, maybe three inches, four inches in diameter. It was round. Mm -hmm. They put you in it, and then they turned the handle Mm -hmm. from the outside. Mm -hmm. And then there was a release button on the inside, which I pushed on and walked back out. (laughs) So at at this point, when you stood in it, it wasn't operational? I was told it was not operational. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten in it. Right, right, right. I would have. Um, no, maybe not. I always think about uh, the movie Galaxy Quest. Remember when the transporter failed? <laughs> yeah, or my biggest thing was the fly. Right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now let's get let's let's get back to this. the 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 gentleman that you were dating, the scientist at Lawrence Livermore. Is he still alive, or is he no? Is he still alive? He's still alive. Oh, That's why I, oh yeah. so we have to do a little dance here. Okay, so I won't ask you his name or his age or how tall he is or where he lived or any of that, even though I want to. No. But, um, okay, so what was, in a general sense, what was his gig there at Lawrence Livermore? Uh, was, uh, was he a physicist that was dealing with, time travel or was was he an engineer uh what did he do well i i believe he was actually an engineer he was working on the collider at the time okay and uh so he had access to other projects and i believe he was a project manager and the project was obviously uh, a time machine. Is that what he called it? Well, no, he never said it was a time machine. Okay. He said that someday, and he pointed to this box, he said you could go any time. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, now, he was obviously you know, bound by some type of confidentiality or or some top secret stuff, but did he talk about it freely uh, or was he elusive? Oh, no, he was very elusive. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He he was very elusive. Did he ever say if it worked? Well, I didn't stay with him that long. He was very strange. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. Interesting. And so I'm, I'm picturing a phone booth. 
Is that kind of, was it about that size you were only allowed to like stand in? Uh, well, it was made so a person of a certain stature could stand in it. And I would think that the, the maximum you could get would be a person of six foot. Okay. And, and just with a little window um, on the door. And, yes. And what else was on the inside? On the inside, there were um, there was a council that had buttons and levers. Okay. And there was no seat. You had to stand. I thought that was kind of rude. Interesting. <laughs> Go through time. You have to stand all the way. Uh, well, we don't, you, you might only be standing in there for a second. You know. Yeah, but it's time, you know. That it's all is, relative. <laughs> that is just an amazing wow. Wow. Um, when was the last time you spoke to him? I spoke to him in probably 2002. Is no, it? 2001 because I moved from the from Santa Rosa to uh, South Lake Tahoe. I worked for the state of California. Interesting. Is there I, when I moved to Tahoe is when I lost connection with him. Is there any way to reach back out to him? I don't believe so. Hmm. I don't believe so. Hmm. I don't think his wife would appreciate oh. it. <laughs> ah, Donna, what a great I, 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 I once again, you know, I'm speechless. I had no idea and you've never mentioned anything about this before. But you Honestly, feel like now looking back, he was talking about, and you stood inside of a time machine at Lawrence Livermore. Yes, and what are the labs? Wow, that is a fantastic story. Yeah, I, and I, you know, people don't realize how big the labs are there, and they and I have seen an elevator that takes you down ten levels. Sure, I believe it. And a lot of people say, oh, you're just crazy. But I know I've been there. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I, I have been to uh, a couple of uh, uh, large, eh, let's just say, laboratory type buildings that did, that, that went under. I, I remember um, uh, I was there with a friend. Uh, I, I can't really go into details, but he's like, yeah, man. Yeah, this is a, this is 10 stories down. And it right. was it was a big building anyway. It was already ten stories above ground. But you uh, can't just walk to the elevator. You have to go through a series of locked doors, and then you get to an elevator. Right. And that elevator takes you down. Right. 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 It's not like in the lobby. When you, can't you walk in the lobby and do it. Yeah. Tell me about that, Donna. When you were there, did you go down? Is that what you're saying? Did you go down, or was? Uh, yes, we went down to a lab. How, how many floors down did you go? We went down four floors. Four floors. And was each elevator separate? Um, every You had to have a key for each floor. Mm -hmm. I they got were you. all listed there, but you had to put a key in and turn it. To go and to the next. And then you had to have your pass card. To um, you, It was like a swipe card. So when you got there, it didn't just open. You had to actually swipe the card. To open the door. To open the door. So even if a person stole a key and got in there, they couldn't get into the lab. Interesting. And what? Uh, so you go out and you're on the fourth floor. What do you see? Did you turn left? Do you turn right? Were you at the end of a hallway? Well, it was a hallway. Okay. And what 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 did it look like? Can you describe that for me? Well, it had a lot of fluorescent lights above it. Um, it was about six feet wide. Uh huh. And. Um, off the hallway was different doors, and we walked down. I probably the third or fourth door. I imagine each room was at least twenty feet, so about sixty feet down the hall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there was another. Oh, I'd say sixty feet beyond that. Wow! So it was big. It was big. And how big was the, so you go into the laboratory. How how big was the laboratory? Was it, you know, a small room, a big room? No, it was about 20 feet wide, about 30 feet deep. Okay, like a classroom size? Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, when I was uh, at Bell Laboratories, that was one of the interesting things for me uh, in the different buildings that uh, Bell Labs occupied. I'm not giving away any secrets here. It's no big deal. But um, the the laboratories, some of them were office sized. I mean, literally, you had an engineer, uh, you know, an employee, a scientist or whatever, sitting in an office with his desk, and he had a work area in front of the desk. So some of them were very small. Yeah. Other ones were like you're describing, you know, just a little bit bigger, like the size of a classroom, 20 feet by 30 feet. But there, you know, I never saw some big, huge open room with 20, 30, 40 people in there working and monstrosities. I never saw anything like that. Everything was just very small and and you could walk around and, and, and check things out. And it was uh it was interesting, but it's not what you would imagine, you know, Bell Laboratories, you know, to be. It wasn't. Well, uh, it wasn't like that. Lawrence Livermore Labs. I mean, come on, you would have expected it to be a big open room, all these scientists running around. Right. No, they had cubicles. It lo- on the main floor when you came in, you were greeted by the receptionist. They had uh, a bank of elevators there that went up. And then there was security post behind that. Well, you, there was a, a hallway on the other side of the security. We walked down that, went to the back, went through a door, walked down another hall, went through a door, walked down another hall, went through a door. By this time, I've kind of turned around. Then we get to an elevator. Then we go into the elevator he puts a key in on the fourth floor and turns it. We go down. He takes his card, swipes it. The door opens, and we walk out. I'm lost at this point. I don't know where I'm at. Interesting. And if I had to try to run and jump and get out of there by myself, I would never, I'd still be there. Interesting. Now, this is the question, though, Donna. If he would have said, hey, you, you know, you want to go somewhere? Would you have said yes? Seriously? No. What? I no, I wouldn't. Why? What if he it's, said it's totally safe? We do it all the time. What if he jumped in, went to 2050, jetted back, brought you a newspaper from 2050 and said, see, I just went there and came back. It's all good. I'm, I'm whole. You want to take a ride? Would you have done it? If he had gone first and come back and said, you know, here, look at this. I just brought it. And I know that there couldn't have been a trick. Yeah, I would consider it at that point. There you go. See, I have confidence in you. I I, I, I would do it. I would do it. Uh, Absolutely. I would do it cold turkey. What what else you got for us tonight, Donna? That's it. I'm feeling much better. Thanks, everybody, for all the light and the love. That's it. That's all. That will always make you feel better. Yes. You know, it's like a little kiss on the cheek from your mom. You always feel better. You know what I mean? And the hugs. I always give hugs. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Donna. You have a great night and enjoy you your do. weekend. Of course, Thank enjoy you. the rest of the show. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Donna. All righty. Bye-bye. Now, she, she, she believes in teeter. Now, that was a pretty interesting... Uh, way to look at it in, interdimensional and they float in bubbles now with a time machine the way that she describes her time machine is not what teeter has in his pictures and if you remember teeter used a couple of different cars i think he had a chevy and he had a four-wheel drive why because of the gravity that is created from his box Think about that for a second. And the suspension on his first car couldn't take it, so he had to go with a four-wheel drive. But that was his. And so the gravity would surround the car, surround the vehicle, and away he went. But she says it was like, I don't want to say phone booth because that's just not right. Well, I don't know, kind of-ish, phone booth-ish, shall we say? All right. I'll be taking your phone calls in a second. Take a quick break. This is Fader Nights only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. If you're on hold, be patient. 
If you're not on hold, I'll be taking your calls next. I'm going to take them in line, by the way. This is Fade to Black, 323-825-5045. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. This is William from La Crescenta, and I listen to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Jimmy Church. My name is Alan, and I listen to JimmyChurchRadio.com. He's always giving it to you straight. JimmyChurchRadio.com on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio, the The Revolution. Revolution. Fade to black. Fader night. 323-825-5045. All right. 972, you're live on Fade to Black. This is Fader Night. Who's calling? Hey, this is Norick. Hey, Norick. How are you tonight, sir? Pretty good. How are you doing? What is shaking? Did I read any email from you tonight? Did I read any Norick email tonight? Uh, not tonight. No, it was last night. Oh. Um, a- a- anyway, you know, that's how much email I get. I can't even remember anymore, but uh, I enjoy all of your email. So, what's going on? That was an awesome what? show on Tuesday, man. Oh, that blew my mind. Oh, uh, with uh, the good Reverend? Yes. Yeah, Reverend Michael Carter. That was a great show. Uh, I got so much email and uh so much positive feedback from that it was uh it was a great night for me too as well i know everybody else enjoyed it but i learned a lot and when you hear somebody like himself speak like that it's a pretty moving experience and and he had me and uh and so if he had me i'm sure it was the same effect on uh everybody else yeah i agree but uh so teeter Man, we got to talk some Teeter. Yeah, let's talk some Teeter. All right, so I picked up on Teeter back in 2012, not that long ago. But when I started reading about it, I couldn't get enough. I'm like, man, where is this coming from? Why didn't I hear about this back in, what was it, 97? 99. Yeah, 99 99, is when it kicked off, yeah. So, um, but here's, here's my issue with time travel. This is, this is the part, the part that I, I can't really get a handle on. I'm thinking maybe you can talk to us about it a little. So I, I totally get traveling through time going forward. We do it all the time. I'm doing it right now, right? No problem. I don't get traveling back in time, and, and this is why. I mean, I, I would get it, but I think there's very specific rules to it. Okay. So traveling backwards in time, my problem with it is that – so. Planet Earth is constantly spinning, and it's, you know, revolving around our our solar system, our sun, which is, you know, revolving around the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, which is huge. And there's all sorts of things flying around it, and there's all sorts of uh, minute gravitational effects on different solar systems constantly, and it's never the same pattern twice. You know, you got this 26,000-year cycle where there is, you know, a very large pattern, which I assume has a very, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I do, I do. There, there are cycles, but, man, this is a huge universe and only one universe, and I, I do believe in the multiverse. Uh, so that's the part that I don't get. How can, if I want to go back 40 years, how am I going to know where the planet Earth is? Not just planet Earth, but where I'm standing or where I want to be. That's right. How do I not end up between walls or in the middle of the ocean? Or That just blows my mind because the calculations would have to be so perfect. And I just can't think of a, I can't fathom a computer that would be able to calculate those uh, probabilities. So that's the problem that I have with traveling back in time. However, I'm willing to make a huge 
uh, exception for, um, I think of it in terms of a portal. Uh, if, if I were, if someone were to create a device today, a time travel device today, uh, and in the future use it to come back only as far as today, then that would make sense to me because you have a point uh, in in space-time. You have a fixed point in space-time. So as long as that device exists, in my mind, the way I understand it, as long as that device exists, you can go back and forth, but you can't. You wouldn't be able to go back further than when that device was invented. Correct. Well, that's one of the theories out there, and that is uh, one of the uh, things that Ronald Mallet has uh, put forward to as well, specifically with his time machine that he has, uh, uh, that he's working on right now, that he's got all the papers written on. Um, okay, so I don't know where to start but with all of your points, but I'll say this. One of the things that Teeter says uh, that they conquered, that they solved with time travel in the year 2039, or, uh, yeah, twenty uh, was that... Uh, 2036, was that uh, th- to answer that. And this is, this is the, the problem that you're putting forward, and I'll try to explain it um, a little more simply. The Earth is moving. It's, it, it's in an orbit. And if you are going to go forward or back in time, where is and the Earth is, is revolving at the same time, so it's going in those 24-hour cycles. And then it's also going around the sun at the same time. So e- even if you wanted to go back in time, let's say, four hours or forward in time in four hours, uh, then you could potentially end up in the middle of the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean. Makes sense? Yes. Right. Right. You, uh, do you got me there? And that's where you don't want to be. You don't want to end up on a body of water. That's one example. Uh, another example is you go backwards or forwards a day, 24 hours. Now the Earth has moved in its orbit, and you don't want to end up in space because your that. body's in the same place. So you don't want to wind up out in the vacuum of space where you're going to die. So, And that's what you're referring to. And, I, and, and again, I'm explaining it in a very simplistic way, but that is what Teeter says they conquered. And he says it was in the form of, and again, uh, I, I don't want to get too deep, but it was called a gravity clock. And the calculations that you're talking about is right there. That's exactly what happened. They were able to do that and address that. So you could absolutely pinpoint where you would be in the earth's relative position at that time going forward and back in time, whether it's 50 years, a hundred years forwards or backwards or a day or two that you would end up exactly where you need to be on the earth at that moment. And that's, that's what was solved in the future. And once they got that dialed time travel was now possible. And, and it's, it's one of those things that, um, in in most science fiction and most theories and, 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 and thoughts and scientists and physicists and so forth on time travel, it was one of those things that was never really quite addressed until Teeter put it forward like he did. And it was a very interesting thing for all of us to just kind of you know look at and go, hmm. Because when you go back to H.G. Uh, Wells and the time machine, remember he's sitting – you know, and the, the time machine kind of looks like a sled, you know, and he's got the sure. the, the the lever in front of him Back. and he's chain yeah, and the wheels are cranking and the uh with the date on it, the calculator and, and it and it's shifting and he and he goes forward or back in time. Well anyway, but the sled always stayed in the exact same spot. And right. it was never addressed or talked about, but we just thought, Oh, that's how it is. But we weren't thinking about the earth rotating and and orbiting the sun and moving because if he went forward, you know, 10,000 years in the future, where the heck is the earth going to be? How do you even know if the earth is going to be there? (laughs) It may may have blown up by then or burn up or whatever. 
but uh, so that that's that's one of the things that Teeter uh, said that they solved in the future. Uh, to your next point, uh, which is uh, going back in time uh, would be more difficult, if not impossible, than going forward in time. Yes, physicists today say, and one of them is Michio Kaku, going forward in time, we do it. Like you said, we're doing it right now, right? Okay, I, I get that. And the example of that is uh, astronauts going into space. They're effectively time travelers. They are orbiting the Earth at 17,000 miles, you know, and they come back to Earth and they're, you know, fractions of a second forward in time. Makes sense. You travel to the moon and come back. Okay. And if you were syncing up watches, you would see that the watch that they were wearing, when they come back, it would be off a little bit. We figured that out also with satellites in, in orbit. Uh, that are off of the gravity here on Earth, and up there the gravity is a little different. And uh, so we had to adjust that for all of the GPS systems because we found out for GPS to work, we had to calculate for that slight time uh, difference that is there. So we figured that part out. Yeah, we are going forward in time, and we, and we can do that. Um, going back in time is nearly impossible. I disagree with that. And the reason why I disagree is the future hasn't happened yet. So that seems difficult to me because it hasn't happened. Going back in time, it's already happened. It's already there. It's already in the ether. All those events, you know, all of the uh, electromagnetism, everything that's out there, it's like if we could figure out a way to go and capture that like a videotape and go back and and at least witness it, you know, uh, uh, maybe not participate in time uh, in the past, but maybe see it. I would think that that sounds possible to me. It, it does. It sounds possible, like it's been recorded. Um, so I think going back in time to me would be easier because that's the way my mind works. You don't think it is. And I get that. I understand. I do. I totally do. I totally agree with seeing it. For example, the uh, what is it called? The um, looking glass uh, thing that you know gets talked about, and uh, you know the, the chronovisor. The chronovisor, yes, right. That would kind of make sense if there if there's some sort of uh, time space signature where you can clock in, where where you can look for some sort of ra- kind of like a radiation signature, right. Where you can search for a, a time, uh, some sort of space-time signature, and focus in on it—that would make sense to me. But but I just can't fathom jumping through it. You know, like getting there—that that just seems very. Uh, yeah, and the whole it, yeah, the whole uh, grandfather paradox. That you know, when you stop and you think about that, uh. Uh, you I, that that makes a lot of sense because how could it be possible? Because if you kill your grandfather, then then you would have never been born. So how could you go back in time? Because you're not actually there in the future. That makes a lot of sense. I um I used to have this fantasy, uh, and I I done a short story about this years ago in school, and. Uh, and the short story was uh, me walking into a, a laboratory, kind of like what Donna was just describing. A couple of scientists are working on a, on a time machine, and they can do it, and they're getting it done. And uh, I go back in, and I, I run the machine myself, and I go back 10 years and live my life, and I go back to that same point. I go back into the room and reset it and go back and live my life again 10 more years and just run in this loop and have a good time. Uh, and that, and, older, so. Yeah, and never grow old. That was my thing, you know, never grow old. You know, uh, you know, go, you, you know, you're 21 years old, go back to 11, live it, and, and, and run in this loop. Well, that, but there's a problem with that because if you go back in time, then, of course, you're looking at yourself at the age of 11. Now, there's two of you, right? right. You know, so uh, you wouldn't actually be living your life over because your other life would live the same life, right? That 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 was there. That was there. So, would you know? Could you 
because now in the future, 10 years later, when you go back into that room again, now you're going in the room with yourself. You know what I mean? And so you're always with yourself. So I, so what would you do? Do you go back? And this is what, uh, do you go back and kill yourself? Do you follow me? Do you go I'm back? Following. Yeah. Your 11 year old self, or are you the 21 year old self looking at your 11 year old self? You know, how does that work? You know, that's, that's always the, the fascination with it. And so do you kill your 11 year old self or do you go and you're your 21 year old self? And then now you're, t- now you're 32, you know, 31 going back in and then going back in time. You know what I mean? So it's not as, yeah, that sounds like a plan and it sounds like a good franchising plan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, I would have totally gone into Donna's friend's machine. Just I, I would totally, <laughs> I would have tried to find the on switch somewhere and just gone. Yeah, I would do it. I mean, uh, I, I would have to say that I, I would want to make sure that things were proven and a little foolproof. But, man. All right. Uh, Bear's calling in. I want to take Bear's call. So let me just ask you this, Nork. Um, uh, if you could go back in time or if you could go forward in time, what what would you want to see? Would you want to go forward in time, and what what is it, or would you rather go back in time and see something? Uh, if I were to go back in time, it'd be for a short period of time. <laughs> I don't want to live very long uh, back there, but of course it would be you know, for to witness Christ. I, I would want to witness that, but uh, if for, to live long term, I I want to see what's in the future, man. I've always been a future oriented love. I grew up on those Back to the Future movies, right? With the car and everything. I want to see what's coming up next. I want. I want to go there. I want to go there. Would you go a thousand years, fifty years, twenty years, a million I, years? I'd like to be able to speak to people, so maybe uh, keep it short to like a hundred, hundred and fifty. Oh, that would be cool. So keep it short. Yeah. Keep it short. Still and sweet. be able to relate. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'd be shocked. Maybe things wouldn't be that different. <laughs> right. You know, it's yeah. it, you know, it's the party system and all. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look back, if you go back 100 years, right, from now, uh, and you go back to <laughs> 1914, it, are we much different than 1914? We have cars, different cars, but everything's still burning gas. We have planes, yeah. different planes, but basically the same. And we have boats, basically the same. You know, what's different today? We have cell phones and the Internet, but they had phones back then. So, you You're know. you me to rethink this. Yeah, so what's really <laughs> different today than, than 100 years? So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you went 150 years in the future, you might not be that surprised. Think about that. Hey, Norik, all the best, all right. my brother. You have a great Thank night. You, Jimmy. I'll talk to you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Bear. How are you tonight, sir? I am doing okay. How are you doing tonight? I hope you got enough bacon. Hey, you know, Bear, you are the bright spot in my day. Well, Nork is great and Donna's great, but Bear is the bright spot in my day. How are you, Bear? I'm doing okay. You're doing okay. But um, I've been at that place where Donna has been, and it's like... uh, well, three football fields long and like three stories high, and it's got like a couple basements in it. It's called Shiba Nova. You can look it up on uh, Wikipedia. It's called Shiba Nova? Shiba. Shiba, as in the goddess of destruction. Hold on for a second. Shiva Nova. Okay, I am there. All right. Uh, spatial filters. Let me see here. I'm looking at pictures. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, it's huge. Oh wow! Yeah, Thank- I worked on that. Did you really? What'd you do? Oh, this is this is huge. Yes, I did. I did a lot of the optical uh, alignment for the laser. Uh huh. Okay. It was a uh, well, without getting into too much detail, it was a neodymium YAG laser that they used as an oscillator and had a bunch of 
neodymium glass plates with the Krypton arc lamps, okay, to fire that puppy up and it focus the beams onto into a big ball, okay, mm-hmm. which vaporized the pellet, okay, and there's so much energy in that thing, they had to, um, you know, evacuate the air out of it because it would literally ionize the air. I'm looking at the building here, and they have uh, three football fields, uh, you know, graphics over the top of it to show you the size of it. This thing you is got it. Uh, this thing is humongo. Yeah, and you don't even see the capacitors below ground. Wow, that is interesting. They got a nice little lobby out front. I can, yeah. And then when you look at the inside, the the pipes and the size of this building is well, insane. Well, the pipes is where the neodymium glass uh, um, plates were, okay, and they were. Um, at Brewster's angle for that wavelength of light, okay, which was uh, 1.06 uh, angstroms or into the infrared. That is crazy. So, you see it. Um, so I'm looking at the inside of the building now uh, with the pipes, and what uh, it's called. The formidable mirrors located at the ends of the NIF main amplifiers use an array of 39 actuators to create a movable surface that corrects aberrations. This is insane. What what am I looking at here, my brother? You are looking at one crazy breeder reactor. Look at the cabling. That, looking at. The cabling that's going up in the middle of the room. Uh, in between mm-hmm. the pipes and then dumping off into each sector. It's like that must be hundreds of miles of cable. Hundreds, 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 maybe thousands of miles yeah, of cable. Yeah, they're all hooked up to computer to discharge a capacitor to kick off a Krypton arc lamp just at the right timing. And so you were one of the guys in the yellow hats? I was one of the guys with a white hat. Uh, what's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? Worker, worker B or designer B? <laughs> and so you were designer B. One of them, kind of, sort of. Uh, you you don't want to um, you don't want to tell I was me. A, actually a contractor that was working there on that. That is that is unbelievable. I can't imagine. Is it noisy in there? or Is it quiet? It's quiet, um, except for the you know people working. But it's uh, yeah, generally very quiet. Now, with this main room that I'm looking at, uh, it looks long and narrow. So, is this replicated? Oh, no, it's, it's a lot wider. It's the aspect ratio of the picture. Okay, you know what I'm looking at, don't you? Okay. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine. So, I just saw the top of the building, and from where this picture is taken to the back wall. I've got to say that's probably, uh, yeah, it's got to be a couple of football fields, I would think. In, in oh, like, yeah, and the, like three stories tall. Unbelievable. And now, how many floors deep is this? Um, below ground or above yeah, ground? Now, well, above ground, it looks like it's maybe it's six. It's three. It's three? Okay. Okay. It's good three stories high. And. You know. Now, you heard Donna's story about the time machine. Can you talk about that? Can you verify, confirm? Um, you know, I haven't worked on that, but that facility there was more or less into, um, okay, what they did was they sort of, okay, let, let me try and explain it. There are two legs of that um, system, okay? One was Shiva, and when they built the other leg, it was Shiva Nova. Okay, and it was the largest laser that was, you know, ever made at the time. Okay, and what it did was it focused all that laser energy onto a little um, grain of sand, sort of thing. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, Okay, and they knew exactly what, you know, was in that grain of sand, and what they did was they looked at... um, all the nuclear activity coming off of it, you know, um, as everything sort of like got hot and imploded and the, everything got released. So they did a lot of, uh, uh, atomic 
kind of research uh, through that and gave a lot of information that they posted uh, to the public, basically. But what it was supposed to be is a, uh, um, you know, the design of it was intended to be a uh, thing to make power, okay? And what they did was they got it almost to unity gain, and then they shut it down. Why? Okay. Okay. So somebody didn't want it to go forward, so they closed it down because it started getting, uh, uh uh-oh, we can get more out than we can get in, so therefore it's a, uh, you know. Perpetual motion. Right, right, right. You know, self-sufficient, positive energy, you know, force without using any kind of radioactive fuel, okay? I got to say, I'm looking at an aerial view of the entire uh, Livermore complex, and this building, which sits, uh, I don't know if this is pointing north, but let's say if it's pointing north, it's in the uh, it's in the 4 o'clock position. It's actually positioned like that. It's like in the 4 o'clock position, the south southeast corner of the complex. If, if I'm looking south, looking if I'm looking north. Um, and it is, and there's a lot of buildings here. I mean, there's there's probably oh yeah, you know, there's probably They're five doing a lot of stuff. That's actually an extension of uh, UC Berkeley, right? Okay, and so you know, it, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there. That is a huge building. I mean, it is just huge. Where was your office there when you were there? Were you uh, were uh, on the campus or were you at this uh, at the NIF itself? I was I was right there on the you know Lawrence Livermore site for oh probably uh, two months. And what was your gig? Pardon? What was your gig? What was your you know what did you do? Oh, my gig was uh, getting the laser, getting it lined up, and making sure everything was uh, timed in and timed out at the right timing. That is, uh, and then uh, once that happened, then they, uh, you know, I did some training and walked away. So what's going on in this building now? Is it just collecting dust? I have no idea. I haven't been back. <laughs> and, and what year, <laughs> Bear, um, what years, uh, what year were you there for that couple of months? Can you say? Oh, that must have been uh, early 70s. Uh, no, I'd say mid seventies, mid seventies. Interesting. It, it's such a big building. I can't see them tearing it down after spending all of that money on it. Something must be uh, going I have on. a big problem getting the parts out because I'll tell you, you know, those tubes that you're, you're looking at those green tubes, probably. Uh, yeah, they're green and gray. Yeah. I, mean, I got a picture somewhere of me sitting on that with my cowboy hat going, yaha. <coughs> oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay, see, now there's two, um, I'm looking at them in, in, inside the main building. Uh, I'm looking, the, the big picture that I'm looking at, these tubes are like, I'm going to guess here and say they're three or four feet in diameter. These are white. They're right. six feet in diameter yeah, and yeah. they were green. Uh, well, these are white, but they're feeding tubes in the back half of the room, which are mm-hmm. stacked up to the ceiling. Um, mm-hmm. And those are smaller tubes. Are, are the smaller tubes the lasers? Where are the lasers in this picture? Okay, the laser is at the far. End. Okay, you see where the where the ball is? Yes, I'm looking at it. Okay, and there's green tubes hooking up to it. Yep. Okay, that's where the glass amplifiers were. Oh, the wow. neodymium glass amplifiers. Okay. Right. And they had to purge that with nitrogen in order to keep it from ionizing. Yeah, you can see some tanks down below with bolts on it. So that's your nitrogen? Yeah. I'm guessing. I don't know. I, I have no idea. It's a crazy-looking machine. Okay, so continue. Yeah. So so anyways, um, yeah, that's basically uh, it. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, Don was talking about it, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, share that with you. Bear, you're intimidating, man. The next time you call in, I'm going to be all freaked out. 
Well, what I've you... done a lot of freaky things, man. <laughs> <laughs> so why but, do you think I keep so stealthy? <laughs> uh, yeah, you are stealthy. What do you? What do you, are? Are you retired? What do you do today? Because that was uh, forty years ago. Well, yeah, I'm retired. I got a broken neck, and so I uh, have to take it easy. I have a bit of a spinal cord uh, issue. Right. Um, so I have to, uh, you know, keep it uh, uh, low down. So so broken neck, so that means right now, right now, you've got a headset on, and that's your that's your thing. No, I don't have a headset on. I just listen to the speakers when I turn the speakers on. Okay. Because <laughs> I could just picture you all spaced out, you know, uh, high tech, you know, all high teched out. Um, but, uh, it, well, I got a ham radio. <laughs> <laughs> I got a general class license. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm you know, teched out. Well, Bear, I, re- I, I respect you so, so much. And, uh, I mean, you're, you're the bright spot in my day. And, okay, uh, well, lots of bacon to you, man. Man, uh, and and say the word poop for me right now. Poop. I'll talk to you. That's Bear, everybody. <laughs> I'll talk to you, Bear. Behave. Okay, be well, be safe, and be cautious. That's what I'm talking about. Bear, everybody. Bear is the bright spot in my day. So he worked here at Project Shiva Nova. Have you got somebody needs to? I'm too busy right here. Whoa, whoa, somebody, Rita, look up Project Shiva and get this stuff posted onto Twitter. It is the most insane. I've never seen a building. You know, I was at Bell Labs for a while. I've never seen anything like this. I was at Bell Labs for three years, uh, maybe a little longer. And uh, I never saw anything like this. At the Western Electric plant, all we did there was make telephones. <laughs> That's all we did there. I don't even think we did pay phones. We made like three phones and cranked them out. Uh, Bell Labs was a separate part of uh, that facility. But uh, nothing like this. I've never seen anything quite like this. That is just absolutely amazing, intimidating. All right, with that, I'm going to take a quick break. Thank you, Bear. Bright spot in my day. This is Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. That opens up the phone lines. 323-825-5045. I'm expecting a call from Walter. Walter. Michael Anderson, where's Naptown? I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. I didn't just do that. I clicked on the wrong button. I canceled the music. How you doing, Walter? Are you there? Okay, you're going to have to call back. Uh, I, I clicked on the wrong button. Call back. Call back. Call back. Call back. Call back. Hey, how's it going, Jimmy? Uh, hey, but you can't hear me, can you? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, call back. I clicked the wrong button, and we are live. Let's go back to... Uh, see what I just did? I clicked on the wrong button. Let's just go right back to it. All right, everybody. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black. I did it. I clicked on the wrong button. I've got three mice in front of me, and I didn't watch what I was doing. And what did I say yesterday? I can't... Can't walk and chew gum. Shoot me an email to Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Taking your calls, 323-825-5045. I'll be back right after this. This is Fade to Black, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. He's always giving it to you straight. JimmyChurchRadio.com On the Dark Matter Radio Network. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com On the Dark Matter.
All right, Fade to Black, Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Tonight is Fader Night, everybody. We're talking teeter, talking time travel tonight. 323-825-5045. Larry Haber was with this attorney with the teeter family. What would you think about uh, uh, Larry's comments? Always interesting. Love, Larry. 323-825-5045. That's the call-in number. Get in line. Make it good. I don't... Uh, we don't screen calls here. I'm not scared. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Jimmy, it's Walter. Wal- Walter. I clicked on, what's funny is, I clicked on the wrong screen with the wrong mouse. <laughs> there, It stopped everything. Did I don't know if you heard that, but it was really funny. It kind of freaked me out there for a second. You, you know, Sorry, I, I, thought it, I, I thought it was on my end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I was... I knew you couldn't hear me. But anyway, nonetheless, Walter. Walter, Walter. Okay, so you heard. What would you like to talk about tonight, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Walter. Um, uh, I, I'll, I don't know. We've, I think we've told the story before, but at Contact in the Desert, we had a little after party back at our little cabin out there in the, in the desert. And we had a great right. time that night. And you and I sat. For probably, I don't know, two or three hours, maybe longer. I have no idea, but it was a long time. And we talked teeter all night. And you know your teeter stuff. And we matched. You know it better, Jimmy. You know it better. I, 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 no, I don't, Walter. You. That was a great night and a great conversation. And uh, and it, it's just something that is a, was a special moment for all of us. And uh, that was a great night. Um, but if anybody's going to post post uh, pictures of that night, don't do the ones of me looking cross-eyed. Do the ones, <laughs> do the ones where I look a little serious. But uh, All right, that was a that was a fun night. Now you heard Larry Haber earlier, Walter. What'd you yeah. think of what he had to say? Uh, well, you can't have um, you can't have a time paradox, Jimmy. Because it's never the timeline you left. Explain. That's that's interesting. Explain. So even Teeter said there's always going to be a 2% variance or more, depending on how far through time you travel with his machine. But even a 2% variance means it isn't the same timeline you leave. You leave timeline A, you can never get back to it again. If there's an infinite amount of alternate timelines out there. So you are saying uh, one of two things, or maybe you're saying both. It would be impossible for him to come back onto this show in our time. For the same exact teeter that was here before, yes. Unless he got lucky and instead of a 2% variance, he hit on uh, double zeros. Yeah, but I wouldn't give it a one in one hundred chance. It would be a uh, maybe uh, the math would be a little steeper than that. So then, what about him going back to the future? He had to go back with uh, the computer, the fifteen hundred, and maybe he didn't get back there with it. Maybe he didn't get back uh, to a timeline close enough for it to matter. He definitely didn't get back to the one he left. When I read into uh, the two percent variance, you know, up to a two percent variance, uh, I looked at it a couple of different ways. I looked at it not so much timeline as it was precision to the date. In other words, the further you go back at two percent, and you wanted to go a hundred years in the past, you could go a hundred and two years in the past, and you couldn't nail it down. Um, that's. Oh. You know, that's the way I looked at it. I didn't look at it as much as uh, the parallel timeline variance going left and right as opposed to forward and back. Do you get me? I get you. And that's, that's another way you can interpret that, definitely, yes. Okay. So you'll, you'll give me that? Will you give Teeter that? I, I, uh, I'm not in the same exact arena on that. I tend to think... Because didn't he talk about, um, he put a caveat out there that was basically, I'm not going to know everything because some of it's going to be slightly different yep. from how it happened on my timeline, right? Right. 
So that's where I got that 2% variance thing. Mm-hmm. Just basically, he wasn't on the same timeline he left, so things were going to be a little different. Right. I always, uh, one of the things w- w- where I've let my mind go with this, if you went forward or back in time, well, let's, let's say back in time, you know, something that you're familiar with, that yeah. everything would just be slightly different to, to crazy different. In other words, um, uh, the personalities could be wildly different. Like you could go back and, and maybe your mom who was misconservative, you know, when you were growing up, you go back in time and your mom is like dating a biker, you know, (laughs) you know, just like uh, kind of like bizarro world, you know, and, and it, it, it it would look familiar, but it would be different. Kind of like the TV show fringe. You remember that? Oh, I love fringe. Yeah, yeah, it's great, and so it would. Everything would be similar. Maybe you, uh, you would recognize yourself or your family or cars, but everything would just be a little different, little stranger. Like maybe right. you know, maybe uh, instead of round, sleek automobiles, people uh, instead of that, they were attracted to square cars, and everything would look like dice and cubes you know i'm just saying it could be cars you know cars are cars but you know it would be just just different everything would be different roads wouldn't be black maybe roads are yellow you know what i mean yeah it makes me think of sliders when you describe it like that yeah 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 a lot like that you know no square windows everything's round (laughs) on houses you know just something you know just completely different bizarro world that's kind of right. the, the the way that I look at it, and and so changing events, it just wouldn't matter because it's simply not you. Yeah, it's not the same timeline, so you'll never have paradox where you go back and kill your father because it's not the same father that you're killing. Right, right, and I'm not necessarily referring to timelines because in timelines also um, you. Uh, you're looking at the events may be different, but but the world itself is the same. In other words, black roads in both timelines, you know, the same cars, the same everything, but just right. all the events are a little bit different. I'm talking about same timeline, man. You go back, but just something else is different. And it's, uh, it's another dimension, not necessarily another timeline, and that you're just a participant there. And everything just right. looks different to you. That's I, you know, it's my twisted brain. But, but I've always thought, if I went back in time and I was hanging out with my family, I may not, I, you know, I may trip out. What I did that? I thought, I thought that, <laughs> I thought that right? I I didn't like those drum sets that that I got for Christmas at the age of five. I'm sitting there enjoying it. You know, it, it would be a totally different world. That's all. I hear you, Jimmy. I hear you. So you excited? Definitely. You excited? You excited about Kay maybe coming on the show? Oh yeah, I, I uh, absolutely. That would be freaking awesome if that happens. I think it will. Well, I, I, sh- I should say when that happens because you know it well, right? Yeah. Well, Teeter knows. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 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 did you uh, did you hear this uh, Carrie Cassidy interview from? A while back, I guess it was a thing she did last year well, which about one? time traveling Nazis. Uh, about time traveling what? Nazis. Oh, uh, who was it with? I think I did see that. She said she had a whistle whistleblower source, and she was talking about the source having been related to Werner von Braun, and that the Nazis had used reverse aging make themselves young again. Right. But they had the, the method they used was via stealing a younger version of themselves from a near alternate timeline. Right. And somehow somehow transferring their soul essence into the younger body. Yep. If I have if I have that right. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I'm trying to think who that was with. I totally remember uh, the interview 
Um, and I might have listened to that interview without watching it, you, you know, uh, in bed and it, it, on, on my nightstand, so to speak. So I don't, I, but I remember the whole thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They stole a younger yeah. version of themselves and they merged. Right. So what did they have? Like a, a, a some kind of soul mirror or something where they could just like transfer the soul essence from the old Werner von Braun to the young one? Right, 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 right. Well, you know, and, and, and going back, um, since we're talking about Teeter and we're talking about time travel, um, I, I I seem to think uh, our I seem to remember our conversation was uh, your position was one of uh, you wanted to believe but you were still skeptical. How do you feel today? I'm a believer. You're a believer in teeter. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir, hundred percent. Did I change your mind? You did because um, the very first show that I listened to of yours was uh, one of the all-teeter shows that you did right? kind of early on. And that's what grabbed me, man. I was at work, and I you know, I, I found you, and I started listening to that show. And I, I had done some teeter research prior to that, so it was an interesting topic. But ever since then, I've been a fan. What, what aspect of our discussion changed your mind? Um... Or was it a totality? Think, was it a t totality of the evidence, or was there one thing that I said? Uh, you know, it really is a totality of the evidence because you you know a lot more. You know more about the Peter stuff than even I do, and I, that's what I love about listening to the shows is I get to hear stuff that I never knew, and it just makes me even more confident in the fact that I think it's it's real. Right, and it for me, it's not so much. It's not the fantastical sci-fi side of it that drew me in, okay? And I'll be honest with you, and I think I said this to you uh, in the cabin that night, but it, it was, for me, the first time that I saw the, the, the cutaway drawing and the time machine itself, the photograph, and I compared the two of them. And at that time, I, I had really high-res images, and I blew everything up, and I looked at it. And my, my experience, of uh, because of my professional career, of what it takes to create, especially back then, what it takes to create a document, to write the document, uh, to edit the document, to illustrate the document, and then to turn around and connect that in such a way that it matches up to the photograph and what it takes to make that object that's in that photograph, if it was fake, because it's so much work. You would have to have artists and scientists and, and technical yeah. writers and model builders and engineer involved so that you would have so many people involved in this project that somebody would have cracked by now. Something would have been, yeah. you know, something would have been found. The evidence of uh, that document creation. Where are those files? Where's the original document? Somebody would have surfaced with those and said, "Look, you know, m me and my girlfriend did this for so and so back in the in 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 the nineties, and and here's all the original." That hasn't happened, you know. Right. And if you look if you look hard enough into the Teeter material. He knew stuff, and he said stuff that there was no way he would have known then. You know, we didn't know about CERN yet. No, you know, we didn't. It wasn't out there in a big way, anyway, you know, when he's talking about it in the, in the material. Yeah, it's not only CERN, and you're right about that. It's not only CERN, but it was the references to mad cow disease. Um, the the uh, information on the original 1500 uh, computer and the language that it was using to communicate with the large mainframes and how it was connected up together. And there was only a handful of people over at HP that even knew that at the time. And, yeah. and so when you start, again, it's like the totality of the evidence. You start putting all of this together, and there's just too many people involved if it was a hoax. And if it was a right. hoax, there's just so many people involved, nobody's been busted. Therefore, it's not a hoax. It's not a hoax until somebody gets busted. 
<laughs> that's it. You know, what is a hoax? Well, that's, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, doing something deceptive. Well, nobody's been busted. So therefore, there's no deception yet. Right. And if anybody's going to get to the truth, Jimmy, it's going to be you. Oh, stop, Walter. So how you doing, man? Are, are you knee deep in snow? What's going on? No, well, man. I'm in California. We pay for our weather. Oh, that's right. You're out here. My my bad. My bad. They, for no, some... They're using the weather control stuff to push all the moisture away from us. I think that's what's been going on. I, I, I every day when I run water here, I feel guilty. I just feel like, man, one of these days I'm going to turn this faucet on. There ain't going to be nothing there. And I've I, got a dripping faucet in my bathroom that my landlord refuses to fix. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to replace the whole faucet. And the thing has been dripping since I moved in. <laughs> so it's just a washer, but Walter doesn't want to go and fix it. No, no, no. We had the plumber come out. The whole thing is it's, it's cracked. The actual sink itself is cracked. So he won't, he won't fix it unless you replace the whole thing. They don't want to pay for that. So it's been dripping. And do you feel guilty? I do. Yeah, it's t- it's tough. It's tough when you, when you live in California. You know, I mean, it doesn't rain here. It, it never. That song, it don't rain in California. Well, you know what? It don't. <laughs> it just doesn't rain. Period. I Ever. Know. And when you think about the two, three, if, if the people that are listening to this show right now on the East Coast, and and maybe in Europe and in Canada and so forth. They don't really grasp because they hear us say it all the time, but they don't get it. It only yeah. rains here maybe a couple of days a year. That's it. And sometimes it's just for a few minutes and then it stops and then that's it. And, and once in a while, one year we'll have a couple of weeks of rain. It is so yeah. rare. I can only I can count that on a couple of hand, or a couple of fingers in the last 30 years that I've been here. Most of the time, it doesn't rain ever. It's not right. an exaggeration ever. Yeah, I, think it's only, I think it's only getting worse, Jimmy. It's only <laughs> getting worse. Well, you know, we went through a couple of phases though, because when I first moved here in the eighties, we were in the middle of a drought. Didn't rain, and then we had this like three month monsoon. I couldn't. I, it tripped me out. I bought a mountain bike to go to work. Yeah, it hasn't rained here in seven years. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll get a bike. I'll ride to work. I buy the bike. The next day it rains, and it didn't stop for like three weeks or something. And uh, But then four years, no rain. Something crazy, you know, like that. It just didn't yeah. rain. Yeah. But, but it seems like uh, we've had a certain amount of precipitation every winter. But the last couple of years, no, no, not really. And this year, this year, a couple of days. You know, a couple of days around. Right. I defy right. anybody to post right now the amount of precipitation that has rained in California, in Southern California, in Los Angeles, in the last eleven months. We are now in November. Tell me how much it's rained here, and the rest of the country wouldn't believe it. You know, a quarter of an inch, <laughs> half an inch, yeah. in eleven yeah. months. They just don't get it. Oh, Walter, anything else tonight on Teeter? Uh, nothing comes to mind. I just can't wait for what new might be coming down the pipe for the show. Yeah, we got some things going on. We got some things. We got Care some things. to share anything with the fader nuts? I can't do that. I can't do that. I, I, I just can't. I can't. I can't. You know why? Because anytime I ever say something, and in this industry, if it doesn't happen, whether it's, uh, a guest coming on the show or us doing something or anything and it doesn't happen, then you don't, you know, I, I, I just like to do it that day. You know, let's just do it right. that day okay. and let's just enjoy the moment because I don't know uh, the night before if everything is going to happen the next day like it should. You can make all the best plans and have everything, but this is the entertainment industry and and you can just never predict what's going to go on the next day. So it's just best that we all live in the moment. But uh, right. do we have some cool things? Yeah. You know, look, I mean, I appear in the next season of, of Hangar One. Not one show, but, you know, the season. And I don't have dates. You know, I don't have dates. So I didn't want, they don't know what day in, in January that history is going to 
uh, debut the the second season of Hangar One. So I was re- right. reticent to mention it at all. You know, yeah. you know, hey, it's going to debut in, uh, in January, and then they do it in April. Well, you know what? I, right. I just don't like uh, – now there's been enough talk about it out there that I feel a little more comfortable talking about it, and it looks like it's going to be in January, but I don't have a date. So what if I say Hangar 1, January 16th, and it's not the 16th, it's the 21st or whatever? I, I don't like doing that. So let's just live in the moment, and when it happens, it happens. <laughs> That's it. That's it to me, Jimmy. Uh, but you deserve every success, my friend. It's it's all good, man, Walter, and and uh, and you were you were out there at contact. You saw what was going on, and and uh, with this show and with uh, all the fans out there, and you know, and you've seen it. You, you've seen everything happen as as we thought it would, and right. we, we talked about it. But everything has happened. Maybe not exactly to the day. But everything has unfolded as as it should, and it's it's been a fun ride. It it has so far. I can't wait to see where it goes. And I'll see you in contact too, my brother. Thank you, Walter. Thanks, Jimmy. You have a great night. All right, you too. Thanks. I'll talk to you, Walter. Walter is the man. But you know what? Steve from Bluefields on the phone. How are you, Steve? Mr. Jimmy Church, how are you, brother? It's another fader night, and you know it's not complete without you. Walter's a trip, isn't he? Walter's a trip, but man, so is Bear. Bear's the I man. Mean, it shows you, Jimmy, the audience that you have, and that the people, not only the you know that you have such an intelligent audience, is that these people have experience. You know, they've worked these jobs, they they've worked at these facilities. Right, right, you right. Know, they've seen this stuff, and they and they. You know, they come on and they talk about it. And it's, you know, it's in, inspiring to, to, to a lot of people. And, you know, well, it lets, yeah. it's informative. It lets you know. Well, you know, check this out. Check this out. Bear calls up. You know, he's a great friend of the show. He's a fader not. He's the man. He's, I, I just enjoy it when he's on. And, you know, if last week or the other day, you know, he said the word poop on the air, right? And he was so apologetic, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, no, dude, 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 you know? And, and so with bear and, and you hear something like that on one show and then he calls back and he's like, dude, man, I was an engineer at the, uh, project Shiva Nova. I was there, man. And Donna's right. You don't know every, you know, and, and Steve, you, you hit the nail on the head. You cannot go through life and, and try to second guess somebody. You can't because you don't know who you're talking to. You know, <laughs> you don't know. You remember, uh, you remember when I told that story about, uh, about Christmas day, you remember with the homeless guy, Do, right, you, you right. Remember, you remember that show? That, right. Yeah. That guy was a successful author. I didn't know that. I just saw him alone on Christmas morning, and you just don't know. This guy's got a shopping cart and a dog, and he didn't want my money. He had dignity, but but you just don't know. I'm a so so careful with that. I never. There's open arms on this show. I respect everybody. Just don't blow that respect. <laughs> don't do it. But I respect everybody, you know. And you just, you just don't know, Jimmy. Yeah, like I, I was, I was at a, uh, a small airport in North Carolina. Or this has been twenty years ago now, and I, I started speaking to a to a middle aged gentleman, and uh, he was in the um, rubber business, and had t- was talking about he had just started a new business. And was talking to getting uh, was there trying to talk to investors and stuff and uh, you know invest in a new company and he ended up being uh, the man that started Nike. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, and I ended up having a you know a two and a half hour conversation with man and you know and he tells me you know he said yeah because I asked him I said yeah what's the you know name of the company you, you're starting he said oh it's Nike. I'm like, that's a, you know, that's a nice name. I'm like, wait, he said, well, we're going to start out making shoes. He said, you know, that he was, and he was there talking to a, a rubber manufacturer trying to get someone to stamp out uh, shoe soles. Right. 
You never know. You and, just, and you don't you don't have a clue. No, you just never know. I am so like I said, I'm always open arms. And I know I'm the glass half full guy, but I live life like that. You know, it's all about can't we just have fun? You know, don't disrespect anybody and don't ever think somebody's not as smart as you because man, you need to you need to check yourself if you walk around with that attitude. You better you better because you're gonna get you're gonna get your wits matched by somebody and it's gonna be a bad day. That's right. Always. Never underestimate anybody. You can't ever. You cannot do that. You can't. You can't. I um I lived with uh, somebody. Well, you know what? I, I can't really give this away because she may be listening, and somebody could put this together. But I used to, I used to know somebody that was a rocket scientist. I lived with at uh, JPL. I'm talking about a Caltech JPL rocket scientist. Okay, that was her gig. She was African American. And she was large. Okay, all right. Okay. Are, are you are you picturing this? And she was yes. she was young, you know, in her mid twenties. Rocket scientist. And I sometimes, you know, we would go out. I loved her to death. We had so much fun together. And 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 sometimes people disrespected her, and they had no idea who they were. T- they had no clue. You know, and it just just used to just rub me the wrong way. You know, it's just some people just, you know, they want to look at somebody or hear somebody or, or, or you know, I, I'm taking phone calls from people here and you just, the listeners are listening. You don't know who the real person is on the other line, but you got to show that respect. You have to, because you just don't know who you're talking to. And that's it. And that's how I live my life. I, I, I swear, when I used to see that go down with my roommate, I used to just get so irritated and, and she would laugh about it because she knew the truth. She knew the next day she was going to work at JPL and she's going to go design some rockets. <laughs> That's what she did. <laughs> and, but, and it just, it, it used to just bother me. It bothered me so much. And it's a lesson learned, you know, at that age, I was young. At that age is when you start to experience life a little bit and you start to see that stuff go on and you learn. And it's made me a different man today. Totally, totally, hundred percent. I can see that you've gone through it too. I've had my my go arounds. All right, teeter. Having <laughs> the sub, the subject of the day is teeter. What do you think? Well, it, uh, we, we spoke about this a couple months ago, you and I, and it's. It's like this, Jimmy. If it's not real, it's the best hoax in the world, bar none. Yep, yep. They pulled it off. They pulled it off. But, you know, you got to give them kudos to to that, regardless. You know, and we we spoke about the uh, the graphics in the in the books. You know that. that yeah, you know, I remember that. that. Yes, yes. You know. The time and effort that that they put into this is enormous. It's not like they put this together in, you know, a week. You know, this was thought out, planned, strategized, and done over a pr- pretty good length of time. With prejudice, yes. That's correct. Yep. I mean, so I, I don't know, you know. Yep. I, I guess uh, if <laughs> I guess I'd like to get in this time machine. And go forward and find out what's not it is. <laughs> Steve, man, all the best, my brother. You have a great weekend, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you uh, Monday. Jimmy, brother, always. Thanks for the time. Steve from Bluefield, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Ah, turn down the radio. Turn it down. Turn it down. I'm way in the kitchen now, Jimmy. Uh, who, who's calling? This is Tammy. Hi, Tammy. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. You're actually teaching me quite a lot tonight about Teeter, but I wanted to say my favorite guitar player is Joe Walsh, and happy birthday. Yeah, Joe right. Walsh. you know, you know, he he, um, he doesn't get his due, does he? Not in my opinion, no. No, he doesn't get his due. He just does not shocked. get his due. 
I was really shocked that, that nobody had mentioned Mr. Joe Walsh. And You want me to tell you a Joe Walsh story? You want you yeah. want one? Okay, check this out. I have photographic evidence, by the way, of the story that I'm about to tell. Okay. It was my birthday is October 10th. And wow. I'm going to guess here and say 1988, 87, okay. 88, right? Right in that time period. On my birthday, there was a guitar show here by Diving Duck Productions at LAX at the airport. Big guitar show, you know, manufacturers and, and you know, really cool thing. And Joe Walsh is playing, Right. Now, I had to go. I was part of Moser Guitars at that time, and I had to go and hang out at the Moser booth and, you know, do my rock star thing that I was doing. And my guitar tech, Rob Cazares, goes, dude, man, let's, uh, let's go watch Joe Walsh play. I said, you know what? Yeah, let's go do that. So <clears throat> we, we wing around, and he's playing in a banquet room in one of the hotels. Small banquet room, you know, might hold 100 people. And oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get there, and we're the, we're the only people in line, right? And so we're standing there, and they open up the doors, and there was maybe, by the time they opened up the doors, 10 people. So Rob and I walk in. They had a bandstand set up there at uh, the end of the room uh, with a drum set on it. The bandstand is about four inches high, maybe six inches high, you know, a little platform. And I go, and I stand right there in front of his microphone. I can reach down and touch his pedal board, right? His pedals. I'm standing right there and I'm waiting. He comes out and starts his show. I'm guessing that in back of me, there was probably at that time, 20, 30, maybe 40 people. And he comes out and he's playing like life's been good or something. And I'm, oh, one I'm of my I'm, favorite song. Yeah. My bird sings that song. Now he is standing in front of me, two feet. We, we are looking eyeball to eyeball. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the coolest moment of my entire life. How can this possibly be happening right now? All right. Right. And, oh, uh, wow. and so a couple of times during the set, he kept playing in like his delay pedal. He would stop the song and it would go. So I would reach down and turn off his, his, his pedal and he'd turn around and, and high-five me and laugh. And, and so this went on for like an, an hour and a half. He plays a full set. Now, it was an extraordinary day. But about a week later, Music Connection magazine comes out. And, uh, and I'm flipping through. Boom. There's two pictures of Joe Walsh playing at this place. One from in back of me and one from the other side of the stage looking out to the audience. And Joe and I are standing next to each other. He's turning around looking in the camera, and I'm standing right next to him. And this picture was taken. And it was, oh, like, the, it, it was like the coolest thing. And I still have that magazine. I still have it. And, and, and that's it. So when I talk about Joe Walsh, oh. yeah, it, it, he, he, he is the guy. I really and look up to him. And he's human. He is really human. There's, I have a friend that owns a... Uh, Manor Records, um, and you wouldn't believe there's so many people out there that fame has went to their head, and other people they've been able to keep an even kill with you know being human. Yeah, and it's like so few of those out there, and he's one of those that are absolutely awesome. Well, I'm going to try to get him on the show. You know, I have a direct line to him, and uh, oh, do you really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Would he you lives- tell him happy birthday from? me and everybody. I mean, because, you know, the man has went through a lot. Yeah, he has. And it it caught me by surprise today, his birthday. I didn't know it. And had I known, I would have uh, reached out through my channels to get him on the show. You can still do it. uh, It's it's possible, isn't it? You can reach out and give him a big happy birthday from me and all the Fader Knots and you and all the Fader Knots and everything. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for the phone call. Happy Fader Night. All right, thanks. I'll, Bye. T- I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? This is Rick. How's it going, Jimmy? Hey, man. Hey, so, uh, Rick, man, you uh, you drove away from the house. Yeah, yeah, and right now we're about 60 miles away from Visalia. 
Oh, so you guys are on the road with the family <laughs> heading to Seattle, listening to Fade to Black in the car. Well, actually, I can't clear. I don't have that much data on my phone. <laughs> so you're just but, calling uh, in a Vader night. Uh, well, actually, calling in on Vader night. Uh, yeah, right now we got like the modern day grapes of wrath thing going on. I got a 26 foot U haul, and I got a 6 by 12 trailer behind that. My wife's got a 6 by 12 uh, behind her van with all my motorcycles in it. And my dad is driving my van with all my motorcycle parts in it. Oh, no way. <laughs> so yeah. one thing goes wrong, it all goes wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah one flat tire, point. all three of you got to pull over. Um, who's oh, got yeah. Who's got the kids? Your wife? Uh, yeah, my wife's got the kids. I got the dog. You and you got the dog, and and yeah. you're calling in on your Bluetooth because I know you're not breaking the law. Sure, <laughs> whatever whatever gets you through the night, Jimmy. <laughs> oh man, uh, uh, are you guys excited? Oh yeah, yeah man. In fact, uh, I mean, I, I don't really want to jinx it, but uh, the house already had an offer on it and a counter offer uh, accepted within 24 hours of posting. Yeah, so yeah. So, yeah, so it's basically sold. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's not jinx it, but uh, yeah, I'm yeah. so excited for you and the family. Now, listen, you weren't listening to the show. You're just calling in to say yo, right? Yeah, just calling. And also, I found out something rather interesting. What's that? that? I'll keep everybody up to date with. As we're packing stuff, I have my great great grandfather's rocking chair that he built. And I found out. For my dad, that I wasn't crazy that the chair rocks by itself. What? Yeah, the rocking chair will actually rock by itself. And my grandmother used to get really creeped out by it, so she kept it in the garage. No way. No way. No way. No way. Yeah, so as we're packing it up, my dad's like, hey, did you ever see this? uh, Did you ever see this? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I got a two year old, I got a four year old, I got a dog running around the house, you know air conditioning, all sorts of stuff going on, you know, gravity and physics happen, man. He's like, oh, no, no, no. This thing moves by itself. It will rock by itself. So tell me. And my, oh, yeah, yeah. And my grandmother refused to have it in the house because of that. And so every once in a while, I mean, I would see it kind of rock a little bit. But, I mean, I just wrote it off as, hey, you know, wind draft, whatever. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, stuff, stuff moves. You know, I mean, it's, just, it's the way it is. I'm sorry, if you you take a picture after the sprinklers get turned off and you catch little orbs, yeah, it's more than likely water vapor. I have proof of that. You know, I've even um, did a mimic of like uh, exoplasm with cigarette smoke while taking a picture. Yes, yes, you yes, know, yes, yes. Things yes. happen. Yes, yes. But uh, yeah, this chair actually does rock on its own. So. Uh, once we get settled, uh, I'm turning on the video camera. Yes. Putting on that rocking chair and just letting it roll. See what happens. Oh, I can't wait. That is a crazy story. You know what? If I had something like that, I'd put it in the garage, too. I really would. And weigh it down with some cinder blocks and then throw a blanket over it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. You see what happens. Oh, your grandmother's on the right page. Oh, man. Well, hey, listen. Yeah, what? She's you, gone now. <laughs> give my best to to the family and say hi to your dad for me. You guys be safe and uh, oh, definitely. and call me tomorrow and check in. Just let me know where you guys are at. It's going to take you a couple uh-huh. of days, I'm sure. So, oh yeah, we we actually uh, got to leave by about day and a half. Okay, all right. Because of all the stuff that we had to do, yeah. All 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 Great. the best, Rick. Seriously, you guys be safe. Cool, man. Take it easy. Thank you, Rick. Bye. Rick is moving up to moving the family. Oh, I forgot to ask him about Teeter. He's moving the family right now to Seattle. They are moving to Seattle from Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, he's a fade or not. He's a family. Let's all wish him the best of luck and safe travels, uh, Rick, seriously. And check in with me tomorrow. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. This is Carol in Medicine Hat. Hey, Alberta. hey, Carolyn, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Crazy uh, uh, last couple of phone calls with you, huh? Yeah, they, they were good. Yeah. They were good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's going on now? Listen, it, it's got to be cold up there right now. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it is. I feel so guilty. I was looking at all these pictures of Buffalo and the freeways and the houses. Although it looks cool, it really does. You know, wow, wow, wow. But it, it cannot be fun. It just can't. Well, you know, Buffalo, they're getting like five feet of snow. We've probably got about six inches at the most. But it, it was cold last week. This week has been very nice. Well, there's you know? there's one thing about Alberta um, and I've been there so many times, and I love it. But there's one thing about Alberta that I don't think a lot of people get. It, there may not be any snow out there, but that wind as it comes through town, it is, <laughs> ooh, man. Yeah. Man. But I'll, the say this, is... I'll say this, though. <laughs> one of my fondest memories about Alberta, and you're going to just laugh at this because you do this every day, but, but down here in the United States, we can't do this. One of the best nights I've ever had in my life was at a steakhouse in Alberta eating Alberta filet mignon, which there is nothing like that on planet Earth, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, at the end of the meal, real Cuban cigars. And I, I know. <laughs> I got to tell you, it doesn't get much better than that. And, and, and I'm sitting, you know... You, you're you're eating the best beef that you've ever you know had in your life. That's the first thing because Alberta beef, there's nothing else like it. Forget it. We don't have anything close to that down here in the states. But with a you know with some scotch, and you're smoking a real uh, Cuban cigar legally, you're like man, this, yeah. you feel like as an American that you're breaking the law. The steak is too good. <laughs> The scotch is too good, and this Cuban cigar is too good, and, and it's just a way of life up there. I'm telling you, it was a perfect evening. Love, Alberta. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. You, Carol, right yes, now, I you do. know I exactly just had what a I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, my, my friends, they took us to this really nice steakhouse there, and they're like, man, you've never had a steak like you're going to have tonight. I'm like, come on. I've had good mm. steak. Oh, no, Jimmy. You're in Alberta, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you forget about anything you've ever had, and they were absolutely right. It was it was a perfect evening. Love Alberta, I, but outside it was minus forty. <laughs> that's that's I what know. I remember. Uh, so I worked outside today. It was good. You just layer up. That's all. I had four layers on today. So Carol, teeter, yay or nay yes. on John Teeter? Yes, yes. Yes, I believe in Teeter, and but uh, you know that the divine feminine is is coming more into the fore, right? Uh, say that again. Say that again. You know the divine feminine. Like oh yes, person has yin and yang in their in their their body and so forth in their realm. But so like the feminine aspect is more feeling. So to me, I think you got to like just forget about the math. I mean, it's fun and everything. You have to go by feel. Like, say, if you think about a time when somebody really embarrassed you in front of people, you've tuned into that frequency. You can feel what that was like, right? Right. So if a pilot had a machine built that could read his feelings and the pilot could get a clear intention of where he wanted to go, that machine could take you. And who cares about the math? Because we're all one in the universe. We're like, you know, a little cell in the body. Mm -hmm. And we're all connected mm -hmm. electromagnetically mm -hmm. and everything's spinning. Mm -hmm. So if you can intend, okay, I'm going to go back to, you know, Woodstock. Okay. Right? And, and listen to Janice Jop and sing or something like that. If you could get the feeling of what that would feel like and intend to be there, I believe that that machine could take you there. You don't have to worry about the math. That's too complicated. Interesting. Well, what about uh, what we were talking about earlier uh, with Norik about possibly ending up in the middle of uh, space or in the middle of the ocean? Well, you can't think of that when you're in the pilot seat. Mm. You don't think of that. You think where you want to go. Don't think about what you don't want to happen. Interesting. You have to firmly intend what you want to have happen. I'm picking up what and you're putting it, down. I am. Yeah, that's good. 
<laughs> no, I am. I am. I, I got you. So, I got you. That's what I was thinking about when uh, everybody was going on. So, <laughs> Carol, you're the I best. Called in. You're the best, Carol. <laughs> Stay a hey, stay warm up there, and uh, and and I'm glad you ate that beef today. I'm serious. That night that I had in Alberta, I, I think about it all the time. It was a mm. li- it was a perfect evening, and I knew that you know just a couple of miles away, I would have been breaking every law in the world. But up there, it was <laughs> I was just fine, and I wasn't going to get arrested. And the the guilt. The guilt left pretty quick. I actually, yeah, <laughs> you kind of forget about it. All the best, Carol. <laughs> Carol, be safe, and we'll Thank see. You, Jimmy. Have a good weekend. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. What's going on, Dino? Hey, good evening. I'm just trying to stay dry. We're having rain up here, but it... <laughs> are you really? Are you having rain? It just left, but yeah, it came in pretty heavy for a couple hours after work. Really? It, it looked like today it was going to let loose a little bit, but you know what? It does that all the time here. It looks like, okay, we're going to get it, but never happens. Never does. Well, before you uh, question me on whatever, uh, I only have the Reader's Digest version of uh, time travel, but before I say that, my request, uh, I'd like to politely ask again if we can get Dan Aykroyd. You said you might have a uh, a channel open to him to come on the program, and also once again, uh, Dr. Charles Hall, because I'm ready to talk about the tall whites. Yeah, uh, uh, Charles Hall is is uh, is a possibility. Dan Aykroyd, no, I actually talked to their manage his manager, and I'll I'll say it right now publicly. They said, "Look, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do." He's traveling right now, and I said, "Okay, that was last week." So uh, he knows. He knows, and uh, uh, so is it. Yeah, I just don't know what what the date will be, but we are in open back and forth communication with his people directly. Okay, well, thank you. I'm glad you're trying. I know that you work really hard, and I hate to try to tell you what to do because you always produce a good show. Um, the other thing I want to say to all the the boys and girls on the fade or not, I'm very disheartened that a lot of them are getting sick. And I got to tell you, you know, I'm no spring chicken, but you got to eat some protein, maybe a third of your diet, but they got to cut out all this bacon and eat more green vegetables. <laughs> and stay healthy. That's how I stay healthy. I just had steamed kale with uh, olive oil and garlic, and that'll keep you healthy. You oh, know? no, no, no. That'll kill me. <laughs> and it was also, and I don't want to tell you what to do, but I feel like you, you know, you always say talking about your weight. If you ate more fiber, you'd find that your weight would drop and you'd feel better. Yeah, if people say that all the time. You know what? I, I do my. You have more energy. I do my cookies and milk. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, Rita b- uh, brought me home the other day. I'm not making this up. I don't know if you've seen this, uh, but if uh, at Seven Eleven. They have these giant uh, Rice Krispie treats. They're like two foot by three foot. Okay? It's like the size of uh, a Ouija board. It's a giant. I don't know. If, I don't. Please, somebody tell me they sell this. You've seen what I'm talking about. I'm not exaggerating. It's like one and a half feet by two feet. It's the biggest uh, uh, Rice Krispie treat you ever saw. So. So anyway, Rita came into the studio the other night with one of those under her arm. I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, quite possibly the world's perfect food, Rice Krispie treats. So anyway, look, look, uh, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not obese, but am I? No, I, you, you always bring it up is why I mentioned it. Well, because you know, look, I, you know, I was, uh, I was always, you know, 120, 130 pounds, six foot tall, 135 pounds for, uh, for years, and, and you know, now I'm older, and and I, I just don't. It's not as easy to to lose weight. Do I? I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't look the same. Well, I, I know this. I'm a couple of years older than you, but I'm telling you, you eat more fiber and the weight will drop off. You'll feel more energy. You still need your protein. What I have made, I, you know, Pamela Anderson was one of the people, believe it or not, who, who I learned from her, even though this is a fact that Nancy Nurse probably knows, that if you eat at nighttime, 
just protein and your vegetables and try to stay away from the carbohydrates at night. You not only sleep better, right. but your brain and your body heal from when you're sleeping from all the protein, building your muscle and such. Right. And then in the morning, you can eat all the carbohydrates and even for lunch if you want. But at nighttime, you got to have your green leafy vegetables or a salad or broccoli, something like that, and protein and keep it simple and you'll sleep better too. Well, um, I, I, and my I'm, weight has stayed the same for, except for when I had a little thyroid problem for the last 30 years. Well, I, I, one of my favorite things now, obviously we all know about my Oreos and milk, uh, addiction, <laughs> but, but I'm serious. One of my favorite things to eat is just a big, huge, huge Jethro sized bowl of salad. With chicken, good. ham, turkey, whatever, but but you know, good greens, you know, good organic, uh, you know, mixed greens, tomatoes, onions, broccoli, uh, onions, you know, uh, and, and lots of and, garlic. Uh, I, I don't do the garlic, but I, you know, I usually do some cheese, and then I ruin <laughs> I ruin the whole thing. Ranch <laughs> dressing, you know, blue cheese yeah, over the exactly. top. But but that's one of my favorite things. I think it's delicious. I, I absolutely love it. I really do. But well, you should try balsamic vinegar and, and extra virgin olive oil and put a little garlic. The yeah, onions are good there. They'll help you out. Yeah, we went through that phase, the raspberry yeah. vinaigrette. Yeah, we went through that phase, blueberry. Hey, here's vinaigrette. a little tip for you. You know, you got to make sure, though, most corn in our country is a Monsantoized. You know, Monsanto is the evil empire that's trying to uh, standardize all of the seeds and that's a whole other program we could get into. But popcorn, without a lot of junk on it, maybe a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of olive oil, can actually be good for you if you can get the non-GMO corn. And that gives you, it fills you up, it tastes good because it's snacky, but it actually will give you fiber and clean out all that crap in your system. Well, you know what Mike Barra, your buddy, said the other day? <laughs> and, uh, l- l- just he's listen. a disinfo agent. You know, he, Mike Barra is the best, man. He's the best. I love Mike I Barra. I know he's your friend. Yes, you. and, and he's our friend. Let's not make a mistake about that. Anyway, listen, uh, Mike posted this thing the other day on Facebook that really opened up my eyes. He said, uh, I... I I'm going to have to paraphrase. I don't have the exact numbers, but he said something like in 1970, before all this uh, 1960, before all this GMO food, the average age in, in, in America was 67 years old today in 2014, it's 79. So I'm not too sure all this GMO food is killing us. (laughs) I think it's the the preservatives. (laughs) Well, yeah. Or or as Chris Nakano, one of my uh, my cohorts when I was in high school, she's told us that our homeroom teacher when we were seniors was this old guy, I don't even remember his name, 90 years old, and he wore a suit, and she says, watch when he writes on the board. She goes, he hits a little flask under his arm, and he takes a hit of whiskey. And I thought she was kidding. And one day I saw him, and he was taking a hit. And she goes, that's why he's still alive, because alcohol is a great preservative. Well, my grandfather said to me, <laughs> Um, uh, who died at a very, you know, you know, he was, he was old, but I remember I was, ah, God, I was, I was, I'm going to say I was 10 or something. It was like, so grandpa, well, you know, what's the deal? You know, how do you do it? He's like black coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and I never forgot that. And, and my grandmother, God bless her. She's still alive. And, uh, she's 88. And, uh, you know, I went back to Ohio for the, uh, for the, my brother's wedding. And I said to her, I said, so, uh, grandma, what's up? Call her Grams. Grams, what's up? How do you, you know, 88. And she looks good. I'm telling you, she looks great. I hope she's listening right now. And she goes, uh, no warm, no hot drinks and lots of potato chips. Well, she said, no hot, no thing. hot. Drink. I said, what about a hot chocolate? No hot chocolate. I, I understand. No, I'm not going to preach to you, but I, I I think that genetics and some family and your family obviously has some strong ones is a good thing. But you're hedging your bet because I got a buddy I used to throw <laughs> papers with. But early in the morning before they called it child abuse, we had to get up at five and deliver the papers when we were eleven or twelve before right. we went to school. Right. And uh, 
And anyway, this guy I've known for years. I've been through a couple of marriages with him. You know, he's got a new wife now. And he just drinks. He's an alcoholic. And he, make, he makes more money than I do. But it's starting to take a toll. But boy, he's Irish and Yugoslav, I think. And that guy's got tough composition. I've seen him so drunk that would would kill anybody else. And he just keeps smoking those cigarettes and drinking every night. You call him after 8 at night. He's, he's a guy with a master's degree, but he talks like a child. But somehow he's still alive. I say genetics. Right on, right on. Hey, before I get to some other calls, really quick, you wanted to talk about Teeter. Well, I can just say that uh, I, I had the uh, the Reader's Digest version because I've never really been sure about time travel. I saw H.G. Wells and watched the Star classic Star Trek and all that. But I will say that here's a thought, and I don't have the math to back it up. But to me, if you were to be able to travel back, I'm not sure about the future, but back, what about the possibility, and a couple of people have mentioned it tonight, that you are not corporal. In other words, we figure out how to do it. You go back. There's no problem with twisting the timeline. You could be like one of these shadow individuals, perhaps, that people are talking about, that somehow you experience everything, but you're not physically corporally there and so therefore you cannot influence too much i totally been back you've witnessed you know i totally agree with you dino totally we don't know and if if, if time travelers from the future why why don't we see them if time travel is possible then then why aren't they here visiting us right now so you're exactly right hey dino you have a great weekend and we'll see you monday night my brother okay eat more vegetables and stay healthy and and i want to tell them uh, Bear from Santa Clara, I'm glad that he shared the story. Fascinating. But be careful. Like Carrie Cassidy, and we all know, I don't want anybody else off. I don't want any more Phil Snyders. I'll talk to you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? It's Ed in Oklahoma. Hey, Ed. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing well. How are you doing? It's a beautiful night out here. How cold is it there? Um... It's about 30s and 40s. Oh, it's not too bad then. Okay. No, no. It's a beautiful starting night. and Just sitting out here under the stars, having a cigarette, the kids smoking my house. <laughs> <laughs> so what's shaking? Um, well, I sent you an email earlier. Yes, you did. Yeah. And um, another thing, uh, I definitely believe in the teeter. Yeah, uh, and so do I, as everybody knows. Uh, well, but but yeah, why well, do you... I, I, wh- just re- I just read on the article tonight. Okay. Because you were starting to talk about it, and I had no idea about it before I read it. And it's like, wow, there's a lot of it made sense. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, could, I could actually see the four factions of the state. I mean, the way we're fighting against the government. Yeah, that's kind of weird, too. That's, a, that's another yeah. weird point uh, that he made a, a, about that. And everything yeah. heating up with Russia and China right now and the Mideast doing what yeah. it's doing. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to see Putin getting all nutty and everything yeah. that uh, Teeter had talked about. And it's, uh, you just don't know. You don't. Um, but yeah. but as, you, uh, as you go down the Teeter Road, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's a never ending hole that you're going to go down, but, uh, just, well, there, there's so many parables to it. I mean, you know, it's, things can change, but we just have to make a difference to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, and what's the one, what's the one thing about Teeter that makes you think it's real, that he is real? It's, it's the factions, the four factions. Interesting. Like, like you said, the what? It's the way, like I said, it's the way our government is running and everybody's just trying to step it. We're getting done with him. And some of them are for him and some of them are against him. You know, uh, um, some people agree. Well, I shouldn't say some people agree. Some people bring up that same point uh, uh, often. And it's something that's overlooked with Teeter. Um, With me, you know, know, Florida and and how... uh, 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 how things were split up. I kind of, I kind of brushed over a lot of that, and I brushed mm-hmm. over the nuclear war aspect. I was always tied up in the black and white technical side of things that convinced me. Um, but, mm-hmm. but you're absolutely right. When you start to look at uh, some of the things that he talks about, about how the United States, you know, got divided up. 
and yeah. no central government anymore and and the banking system and and how things were run uh and all the local farming uh, you know all of that was uh um something that i think is uh it gets overlooked quite a bit and it's interesting how that's what swayed you mm-hmm. yeah absolutely wow ed all the best my brother you, you just stay warm out there anything else Definitely before i let you go I'd be a fade or not. <laughs> I'm proud that you're a fade or not. Thank you so much, hey, Ed. I love the bacon. I'll talk to you. All right, take care. Bye bye. I was just reading on Twitter. Uh, bacon is protein. <laughs> I was just reading that. Okay, listen, I'm going to take a break. Lots of great phone calls tonight. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for that. This is fade to black. Three two three eight two five. 5045. We got time for maybe a couple of more calls. 323 825 5045. You can also Skype in Fade to Black 14. Email Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. I will be back right after this. Stay with us. KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com On the Dark Matter Radio Network Hey, this is Alan Johannes from the Vultures of Queens of the Stone Age. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com Oh God. I gotta just listen to this for a second. Yeah. Oh man. That's Dizzy Reed on keyboards there. And uh Chris Frazier on drums. That's Doug Aldrich. All you players out there, uh, in Ian on bass. If uh if you play, don't you wish you could play like that? <laughs> Don't you just, you're probably thinking to yourself, it's not worth it. <laughs> Turn my guitar into a, a coffee table. Hi, you're live on Faded Black. Who's calling? Well, it's your one and only Space Boy. Hey, Space Boy, what's shaking bacon? Well, I'm doing pretty good. How are you, boss man? It's, uh, it's all about you, Space Boy. You know that. <laughs> well, yeah, don't tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's bring in Les. Les is with us, awesome. Space Boy. Check it out. We got Les and Space Boy at the same time. How you doing, Les? Space Boy, how you doing, man? Good, Leslie. How are you doing, my friend? Good, good. I was just uh, chilling, listening to a little bit of Doug right before I called in. Hey, hey, uh, really quick, Les. Uh, is Space Boy was first, so we're going to get Space Boy here, but. Oh, you, you said, do. but you said to me before the show I was going to be this big surprise. Did I miss it? Oh, it was. What's that? We all did bacon. We all did bacon at the same time. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, you guys conspired behind the scenes. I did see that. I saw paragraphs yeah. of bacon. It's still coming it in. Never happened. It never happens exactly the way you plan it, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was tripping on it. I, I was. I was like, what the heck? You know, it just came, it just <laughs> bombed with bacon all of a sudden. It was pretty funny. Well, you heard me mention it at the front of the show. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Space Boy was shaking. Now, Space Boy and I, uh, he was part of the uh, the uh, the conversation that night in the cabin, the big Three hour teeter talk and uh, teeter. Yeah, I, I, wanted to make, I wanted to make sure the audience knew that Space Boy was there. Yeah, teeter and vodka is what that was. <laughs> um, uh, so, 
Um, looking back, uh, where where were you at Contact in the Desert? What side of the fence? Uh, what side of the teeter fence were you on, Space Boy? Well, I've always uh, thought the subject matter was interesting, to say the least. But um, you know, more recently, I think I'm 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 kind of the uh, the skeptic on this one. Uh, I know that we've had this guy named John on the air, and uh, I have my reservations about him. But overall, I'm leaning towards the possibility that he's out there. We just need to hear from him. And, uh, okay, so back at Contact in the Desert, that night in the cabin, what side of the fence were you on? Were you... Well, I was still pro, you know, uh, believing in... I believe the story is is a wonderful story, and I believe in John. I still don't think we've heard from him. So I, I don't think I've really changed much since the cabin. Okay, so my big, long, three-hour diatribe... Uh, didn't change you, or it sounds to me like you didn't. You didn't. You weren't buying what I was selling. No, that's not the case. I, I it's you. You laid down a wonderful uh, series of uh, okay. This is Exhibit A. This is Exhibit B, and the proof is there. Uh, I'm just saying that we haven't heard from him. In other words, the the guy that's claiming to be John Tier Two that has been on the air. I have my reservations on believing that he is a John Tater or John Tater or whatever he called himself that night. Titor. Yeah, Titor. 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 Yeah, Titor. Not to say that uh, I don't believe. I think that there's a lot of, I mean, you can't go this whole time without somebody saying, you know, coming out of the woodwork, you know, saying, hey, I was there when they manufactured that, or that's a prop from X, XYZ movie, or, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, it's just, there's just so much that, could have been like, you know, like, for example, the stupid video of this planet behind Saturn that's got me all riled up. Um, that is obviously photoshopped. I mean, that's that's just immediately came out. There's no, you know, right there. It's busted in my mind. But the John T. No way. Story, oh. yeah, there, there's so much there that, that it's nothing's been busted on it. It's just so sound. And then I say to the detractors about, well, the time line where this hasn't happened like here or that hasn't happened there. We're still talking about variants of the timeline where, you know, he could have come back on a timeline where that quite didn't happen in a certain uh, order of events. Yeah, and, and you know, what you are saying is the problem with the Teeter story. You can't debunk it. That's the mm-hmm. problem, and that's why we're still talking about it today. Any debunker that wants to go out there, any skeptic can just go, well, you know what? Time travel's not real. That's the end of the story. Well, you know what? That's not good enough. You need to go a little bit deeper. And that is why it is alive and well today, because you can't take it apart. You can't. You can't. There is nothing, none of the hard facts, none of the evidence, the the photographs, uh, the manuals, um, uh, and, and none, none of that has been debunked and taken apart. That's the hard evidence. The rest of it is just somebody, um, uh, talking and you can't tear that apart either because you can't say it's not true. Show me right. that it's not true. And then we got another discussion here, but, but you can't, you can't just say, Hey, it didn't happen. That's not good enough. Not, not in court and not on this show. Mm-hmm. All right. And then I, I've got to real quick, Jimmy, you know, yeah. you, you come down to the fact that uh, as a time, you know, us as in the present, we wouldn't really, if there was a change in the time, we wouldn't really know. I mean, do you see where I'm going with that? Yep. I mean, the, with the variations in time, I mean, that's why the story has to have a certain leap of faith to it. Um, but uh, as far as I stand, I believe in the story. I just I'm waiting for John Teeter to appear. That's what I'm I'm at. Space boy, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, he is. All right, let's 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 let let's close out the show. Hey, Space Boy, thank you for all you do, my brother, and you know that. Oh, thank you, my man, and I appreciate your happy birthday uh, thing on the beginning of the week. Oh, you got it. And, and uh, give my best to the sea woman. I know she's sitting right next to you. <laughs> And give virtual hugs to Woo Woo for me. I will. I'll talk to you. Uh, Thanks, right, Space Boy. Hey, you too, my fan friend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, buddy. 
All right, Les. So, Les, um, you were talking about we got two minutes. We got to squeeze all of this in in two minutes. That Saturn thing is pretty freaky. Now, you just heard Space Boy say Photoshop, end of story. And you jumped in and well, said no. Why? No, 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 no. I, I'm agreeing with him. Oh, you uh, are. 100%. Yes. Uh, it's either Photoshopped or it's just plain fake. Uh, look at it this way, Jimmy. The gravity from something that big, even if it was a planet, would start distorting the sat- rings of Saturn and would pull Saturn into it, would it not? And pull it out of its orbit? Correct. I mean, the first thing to, to go would be the rings. Right. And then the planet itself. Right. If it was that close, it, it, Saturn would be it would be gone. Nobody could see it anymore. It would be a bad. Were, it would be a bad day in Red Rock, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be, oh, it would be a bad day all over the solar solar system, my brother. All yeah, over. Yeah, it's a it's a crazy. Um, people will do. Uh, strange things for clicks and uh, you know, like the mermaid stuff that we posted the other day. Now, look, I look, uh, look, 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 come on. It's mermaid. So it's not, let's not go too far out here. I posted it or we, I, there's no I here that we posted it because I thought the pictures were cool. That's why I gave the green light. I'm like, okay, what does everybody think of this? Um, but when it comes to, and that's that's it. That's my that's my disclaimer on that. That's my Larry Haber on that. But when it comes to uh, these pictures of Saturn um, and this object, why do it? You know, unless you're just doing it for sensationalism, because some people take it really serious, and it freaks a lot of people out. Yes, absolutely. You know, I'll admit when I saw it. <laughs> My stomach was doing backflips. Well, yeah, first. because you're listening to a guy say that he's an astronomer in Hawaii and he can't download these pictures, so he's got to shoot this off of the monitor for with his cell phone in order to get this out to the world. And you know what? Nobody wants to hear that. We're all kind of freaking out. So Yeah, there's enough weird, freaky stuff that's happening every day that we don't need stuff like that. We really don't. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's uh, let's get this started. Uh, I'm going to do the first line here. Coming up next, thank you for all the callers. Coming up next is Spooky South Coast, uh, Night Watch and Spooky South Coast. Okay, take it away, Les. Okay, special thanks to Keith Rowland and Art Bell, Fade to Va- Plate to Black Executive Producer, Sarita Kamurian. show is produced by Hilton J. Paul and Mark D. Kovar. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Bateau, and Mark D. Kovar. Fade by Dale, graphics by Method. Music by Doug Aldrich. Intro, intro by SpaceBoyMusic.com. I am Les, the closer for the evening. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Dark Matter Radio Network. And with this, we are... Out of here. See you, Les. Thank you, everybody. Be safe and have a great weekend. See ya.